Hello and welcome to this exciting tutorial where I teach you how to create your very own music website from scratch. So we're not going to use any templates or anything like that or use any plugins or anything like that. We'll start coding this from zero using just the text editor. Okay, so let's look at the features of this website. So of course it's got a home page with um, hero image and then some featured content here. There's a search here where if you want, you can search for a song. Let's say I want to search for this particular song. I'll type baby, enter, and there it is. So I found the search, and searched for baby. I have um, music here that shows the top rated music by view. So this one is the top viewed uh, song. I can see that if I click on it. Uh, this is the uh, song view page and you can see how many views it has, what date it was created. And if you want, you can click download and down it, download it there. And if you want, you can just play it from here. And there it is. All right, with an image there and everything, awesome. There are also categories here. You can search for country music, no songs in country, dance we have these in dance you can see the category is dance uh, or pop that's entirely up to you and then we have of course the about us when a page is not found you see page not found when there's a contact page contact page and then we have this here that shows you the admin section as well we also have artists these are artists here if i click on an artist i can see their bio as well as if they have any songs like this artist over here, I can see what songs they have, including their bio, even this one. This one has two songs there, as you can see, very nice. If I click on the admin section, I can go to the admin section of this one. And uh, there's a dashboard here, even though it's plain, but you can add what content you want. I can edit my users. There are users here, there's an admin, there's John. This one has a specific role like user, admin, date created. I can edit this user here and save. It will show me that the user has been edited. I can delete the user, click delete, and it will show me that as well. I can add a new user here. Same thing with songs, there are songs here. This is a list of songs. There's an image, there's a song here, um, the song file, which I can play if I want. I can edit this from here and I can delete if I want to delete that song. Also, if I want, I can click to view uh, the song. Oh, I didn't put that here. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. And then we have a list of categories as well. And by the way, we do have pagination as well. You can go to the next page, previous page. And we have categories. This is where we create a category. For example, if I want to create a dance hall category, uh, I can just create it like that. And there it is now. Okay, I can edit it, uh, add something else, and so on or delete if I want, delete and it's gone. All right, same with artists. I can create artists here like this one. This is the artist bio that we saw earlier. I can click edit and edit the artist bio, add a new image, for example, uh, let me go here. Want to add a new image for this artist. I can just choose maybe this one and save. Now there's a new image for this artist right there. Alrighty then, so then we can log out if we want. And this is the login page over here. When I click login, I come here. And if I mess my login up, I'll get wrong info. Or if I put password because this email at email.com and then password is just password and then login. And now I'm logging to the dashboard and then I can go and do what I want here. All right, so hopefully uh, this is something you can learn from. And by the way, I'm not going to use object-oriented PHP in this tutorial because 
uh, I got requests to do just procedural coding for a big website like this. In order to follow along this tutorial, you must know the basics of PHP and HTML. So if you don't know the basics of PHP and HTML, check the links in the description. There are videos to teach you that, then you can come back to this video. All right, to begin, make sure that you have a server installed and mine is ZAMP that I downloaded. So download ZAMP, it comes with Apache, it comes with PHP and it comes with MySQL, which is the database. So download ZAMP and install it. This is the download section here. You can grab the 64-bit version depending on your computer and install that. So once you finish installing that, if you go to your browser and type localhost, you should see something like this. And if you don't, open the ZAMP control panel and then uh, click start on Apache and start on MySQL. Now, if you're using uh, a Mac, just download MAMP instead. So replace the X with an M and there is your software. Okay, the second thing we need is bootstrap icons so we want to use some icons we'll use the svg versions so you can get icons from anywhere i'll just be using the bootstrap ones they're just images they're svg images but here i can type something to search for the icons now if you click on this version number here or the download button it will take you to a github repository here where you can click download to get the zip folder that has the icons in there all right and then right here on bootstrap there is a starter uh, getting started with bootstrap there's a starter thingy here which we are going to use this is just a basic html um, a page now the reason i'm copying it from here not just typing it is because i want to copy this part this meta tag here is important for responsive design but the rest of this you can create using uh, sublime text or some other text editor of your choice. Okay, so when it comes to text editors, use I'm using sublime text. I hope I already mentioned that. So download sublime text or buy if you like it, but you can use any text editor of your choice. All right, then go ahead and download images for musicians, of course and download a basic logo as well so once you are done with that um, go to zamp folder so i have a folder here um, not this one but this one so go to where you installed your zamp in my case it's drive c so zamp and then go to the folder htdocs this folder may be different depending on your server. It may be the www folder or public HTML folder. And make it a folder in there called music underscore website and then put your content here. So here is uh, Lato, which is a font that I got from Google. So just download this from Google. Just type Lato font download and then you're going to find uh, Google download link and but you can use any font of your choice doesn't really matter you don't even have to download a font you can use the default fonts like tahoma that's fine as well and then these are the bootstrap icons and then here i have a folder of images so this is all i have for now and these images i've named them 010203 to make things easier to grab uh, the, some of these images and this one i've named logo.jpg because that's the logo I have chosen. Okay, so with this in mind, we have everything we need. Now I just need to organize these things a little bit better. So inside this uh, music website folder, I'm going to create app folder like this. And I hope I've already mentioned that we're not using OOP in this uh, tutorial. We're using procedural coding, so no object oriented in here because some of you requested that. So up and then public. So we need a public folder and then we're going to need an app folder where we put all the important files. This is important for security reasons. Okay, so inside public, 
I'm going to create a folder called assets. That's where I'll put all my assets in here. And inside assets, I'll have a CSS folder. I'll have a JavaScript folder. I'll have a uh, fonts folder. I'll have icons folder. And of course, I'll have images folder like that. Okay, good. So let's come back to here and let's grab Lato, cut, go back inside here. Of course, it's a font. I'll extract it here. So I'll extract it there just in case you have several fonts, uh, you can put their folders in here. Okay, so let's get some icons as well back here. Let's grab this, I'll cut that, go to public assets icons and paste and then i'll just say extract here right so here there's icons but i want to cut everything from here i just want it to be right in this folder right there so icons then i can get the icon directly there that's great and then i have images here but i have an images folder here so i'm going to cut this image folder bring it in public assets and paste it here to replace this other folder here and there we go we have our images in there so this is the structure we have for now in the app it's empty but we're going to put two folders one is core the other one is pages okay so here we'll put the files that we really need here we just put the pages as we create them okay so essential files pages here great so let's come back here and we have a public folder. So now I want to go into htdocs and grab this folder, music website, and then drop it in my sublime text like this, okay? So that I can work from here, all right? And now if I go to my browser, I should be able to navigate to this. So I'll type localhost slash music website slash public. Okay, so it shows me the directory since there's no PHP file in there, which is fine. So let's change that by creating a PHP file in here, which will be the home page. All right, so public, um, right click, new file, save this. This is the index file. We'll save it as .php since we'll be adding PHP anyway. So let's save it like that and now if i refresh i get this empty page so what we'll do is we'll create a dummy index page here just for use now and then we'll move it later to the um, to the appropriate place inside app pages okay so for now we start from here now in here i want to add um html tags like so and then the title is music website let's add a meta tag for char set and maybe language as well now we can just copy this from the bootstrap section here there's a meta tag for the responsive design which i was talking about this one is important for responsive design and maybe we can put language in there as well so copy this and let's paste that there okay great so we have everything we need for now now let's start uh creating what we need our ui okay the interface now i'm going to put styles in here then we'll move them out later because it's easier to do it that way and then here I will create a header tag because I want to create a header for my page like so. In the header, I'll create two divs like that. This one will contain the logo like that. So the source for this is assets, images, logo.jpg like that, okay. So I can give this one a class of logo holder and this one may be a class of logo itself. 
And then in the second one here, I will have two divs as well. This one will have the title of the website. And then a second div will have the navigation itself. So let me put classes on these so I can target them. Um, this one will be main nav. This one will be main title. All right, and uh, what else do we have here? Uh, that's the holder. Let's put a class here. Um, I don't know, I'll call this one header div for lack of a better term. Okay, now in the navigation here, we're going to need to add some divs as well. And these divs will have a tags in there. And then that's when we have our text. So this one will have a class of uh, nav item. These ones are classes. These classes, uh, you can create any names you want for these classes, of course. But keep in mind, this is not an HTML tutorial. So I will be cruising through the HTML just to get to the PHP. Okay, great. So I have home, I have uh, music, uh, categories, artists, and uh, contact about, and then user. So here we'll say music, and here we may want to add a category and some categories. And then we have uh, artists, then we can have about us, and then contact us. And then finally, we can have that place where that shows hi, user, something like this. Okay, very good. This is what we have. Let's see how it looks like. So refresh. At least we have a title, we have some content here. Let's change the font to match a uh, lato that we have. So if I now decide to go to the same um, folder in public assets and fonts, we have lato in here, but I want to use the regular lato regular. So I just want to type your name so I can grab the, the file name. You have to grab the fire extension as well. So in styles, I want to import this, um, I'll say font face like this. And then I'll put source URL like this and put the link to the font. Now the link is in assets slash um, <coughs> fonts, right? slash and there we go and then the font family that's the name we're going to give it is lato okay now let's go ahead and add some some styles for our body and the body i don't want the body to go uh lower for responsive design reasons than 350 pixels you can experiment on this and um uh, decide which one you want. Let's look at the font family. Let's call Lato. If that isn't um, available, let's use sans serif. I don't know if this is how you, yeah, maybe. Tahoma. Okay. And then let's look at the A tags in the body. So those are the, uh, let's remove text decoration on the A tags, let's set that to none. Okay, that's great. Let's remove the original margin here, put zero pixels. Same with padding, let's put zero pixels. And let's put one that has, this star means all items, and I want to remove the box sizing, oops, box sizing to border box this will just make it easier for to create widths because normally what happens is when you when you create an element like an input box and you add padding that padding enlarges the element so this one avoids that okay so that's that for now i think we are good to go
Okay, so let's come back and refresh. We want to pay attention to the font to make sure that it has changed. So let me refresh and you see the font has changed. So that's cool. Okay, but let's um, style the header a bit better. So what we will do is let's add some styles for this. So we'll start with header here. So let's do header. Um, we'll use display flex for header. Okay, that alone will give us something better like this. So things are left right now. That's cool. And then let's reduce the width for this one. So I'm just going to say logo holder. So dot logo holder. And I'll say max width for this one is 150 pixels. Let's try that. Let's see what happens. Okay, so that's good, but the image is too large. So let's just make sure in the body or images. Uh, let me duplicate this. We make sure all images go to 100% width. So let's say width 100%. Okay. All right, that's much better. And there we go. So maybe instead of 150, let's put 100 pixels for the menu holder. So it's up to you how what sizes you want to uh, display here. That's entirely up to you. So logo holder, and then we have header div. I want it to go all the way. Uh, so I'll say flex auto. This one I'll say flex one, I guess. Maybe that will help. Let's look at that. Okay, great. Then I want display flex on these as well. So this one is for the main nav. display flex as well and then each nav item so nav item each navigation item should have some padding and padding maybe 10 pixels all round then text align center okay let's see that refresh and there we go okay then um, let's add some padding here also on the main title padding 10 pixels okay good all right so at least we have something that resembles a navigation etc etc let's put a a dash at the a thing at the bottom here. So we're going to have a header dot active. So we're adding a active class and we just say put border bottom and just put solid four pixels red. Okay, so that if I put active on this home uh, like this, it will show that this is the active uh, Yes, like that. Okay, good. So things are looking great. Let's add a, a tag to the image like that so that it's clickable. Let's go this way. Good. And let's refresh. All right. So, so far, this is fine. Let's put an image down here. Also, I want to put, um, I want to like in category here. Let me move this down like so. I want to put some drop downs. Uh, so I'll put a div here and then in here I will put a tags. Uh, actually, I'll put divs that have a class of nav item. And then I can put my a tags in here. And then so category, maybe there's country music. Uh, let's put a few here pop 
and RNB, etc. ETC. Let's put a class here. I'm going to call this one uh, drop down list. Then on this one, I'll put drop down so that I can recognize that this one has a drop down. Okay, so I'll grab exactly this here and do the same for the high user here because this will be a pop up menu as well. So let's paste that. Let me do this here. Don't forget to write drop down here. Okay, so on this one, we'll have profile and maybe admin area and then log out. Okay, great, great. All right, that's cool. But um, if I now refresh, this is what I get, but I want these to be drop downs so they don't look like this. So let's add our style down here. So say dot drop down. Uh, let's just change the position to relative. And then let's do dot drop down list. And then here the position is absolute. Let's add a border so we can see it. Border and say solid, thin, very light gray, like that. Let's also make sure it has a background color of white, like that. Okay, cool. Maybe a margin at the top, we'll say margin top of 10 pixels. All right. So back here, let's refresh, and this is what we get. So this is now a drop down from here. We're going to make it active using some JavaScript. That's probably the only JavaScript we are going to use in the whole project. All right, so let's go ahead and add a new section here. Uh, so let me do section after this part here. So this section is the hero section here. So let me put an image source. I'll say assets slash images slash uh, hero. So there's an image I named hero to JPG and save that. So if I now refresh, this is what I get. So, but the image is too large, so let's limit it. So I'm just going to put a class of hero. Okay, hero, yeah, that's enough. So let's come back here, dot hero. And then I'm going to give it, the width is already 100%. Let's put a height of maybe 500 pixels. And yeah, that does it. It's better, but now it's squished. So to avoid this, let's use object fit cover. Okay, so refresh. And there we go, much, much better. Okay, so after this, we go down here, add another section for content. So I'm going to come down here and do section. Let's give it a class of content like that. And then in here, I want to add, uh, actually for now, let me just add maybe an H3 tag and say uh, featured like that. And then uh, let's name this one section title like this, okay. Then I want to put a music card in here. So I'm going to put a div. This is like one song here. So I'll give it a class of music card. And then in here, I'll add a div and then I'll add an image tag. Let's put the source at assets slash images slash zero one dot JPG. Okay. And um, what else? This one, since the style is simple, I'll just add the style here. And uh, I just want to say overflow hidden. So that when the, we're going to be enlarging this image using animation and I don't want it to overflow. So we'll put that there. And then from this, I'm going to add another div here, um, class and say, 
card content. So that's the card content there. And then in here, I'll add another div and call this one card title. Okay, so uh, let's just put song title on this one. And then down here, I'll just put a div for, um, I'll call this one card subtitle and then artist name. Okay, cool. So this is one card. Let's put some commenting here. We'll say end, end music card. This is not how we write end, is it? So let me copy that and put it at the top here so I can see this is my music card. Maybe we can say start music card, end music card. All right, cool. So let's see how this looks. Obviously it looks terrible. Hi, Alicia. So we have featured there and song title name. So let's fix a few things here so it looks better. So to start with, we're going to look at the section, um, the content. Uh, all right. Maybe we can call it section content. I don't know. Let's put some padding of 20 pixels. And then let's do card, um, music card, yes. So music card will have a width of 200 pixels. It will have margin of 20 pixels so that um, there's space between them. And then it's going to have, um, what else will it have? No, I think that does it. Let's do, um, wait, what did I name the others? Card title, card content. Okay, so let's try card content. Here we add a padding of four pixels. And that's it. Let's look at card title. Uh, let's try font size, maybe 18 pixels. The other one is card uh, subtitle. We're going to just change the opacity of the text, point, maybe 0.7, like that, and that should do. Okay, so let's see where we are at for now. If I now refresh, this is what we have. So looking much, much better. And let me put some, um, some gray on the music card itself. So I'm just going to add a background color slightly off white like that. So we can see what's going on. And there we go. Okay, cool. And uh, yeah, this does it. So now let's, let's put multiple cards here. And I'm going to duplicate this a few times. Shift Control Shift D if you're using Sublime Text. Okay, maybe I went too far here. So let's just change the images. I'll put two here, I'll put three. So you can use your own images, of course, um, and how you have named them. Seven, and then eight. Cool. So if I refresh, these images go down like this, but at least you can see there's a list here happening and that's cool. But in order to make them go vertical, we're going to use the content here and just say display flex. Now to make sure they can wrap around, we're going to use flex wrap and tell it to wrap. That way they don't stay on the same line, even when there's not enough space, okay? And also let's justify our content. Let's say justify content center like that. Okay, this is what we get. Okay, and if I go to responsive design view, 
uh, if I start to squeeze in, they move to the next line like that. Okay, so that's pretty cool because of the flex wrap. Now the image's height is not ideal because they are of different heights. So what I'll do is I'll duplicate music card here and then put image IMG and let's set that to, let's give it a limited height of 200 pixels so that it's a square image. Since we know the width is 200, oh, there we go. But the image has been squashed again. So let's use object fit cover and that should do the trick. Okay, very good. Now we have some content. Uh, you know, before copying this content, I wanted to add an A tag here. So I don't know how I missed that. So let me try and do that. I'll select all eight uh, images here like that. Go to the beginning, put an A tag there. Oops, A href is equal to, and then close that tag. Then press end and then close the A tag. All right, so at least now we have an A tag there. Okay, cool. Let's do a hover effect here for a second. So there's music card image, but I'll duplicate this and say music card image hover like that. And when we hover, I want to transform this. So say transform scale the scale is 1.3. One is the default, 1.3 is slightly larger. So if I refresh now, you see this is what happens. But I want it to be a smooth transition. So right in music card uh, image here, I'm just going to put transition to tell it that the image, whenever we change something, it should transition. I'll use O and say 0.5 seconds and use ease like this okay as the transition out and in so there we go we get this now if you don't like how this moves you can right click any of these inspect the element it's going to show you transition here and on the ease part you can click and add something else see it shows you how this works i like this backward yeah so let's select that and then we can just copy what we've done here and uh, paste it here, like, like that, cubic bezier, instead of struggling to figure that out. So refresh, and there we go, we have that. Very nice. Okay, so now let's add the footer, and then we can call it a day. So let's go to the footer. And after section here, we're going to add a footer tag, like that. Then I'm going to have a div here, one div. Uh, I'll give it a class and call it footer div. Duplicate this a few times and then I can add some more content here. Here I just add some links. So I'll put an ordered list and then list item and then a tag there and then put some links. So home the same links at the top there, yeah. music. But here I want to put the login page as well. And this one may be about us and contact us. So you can put whatever you want here. Right, cool. Mm -hmm. Then on this one, I want the search uh, thingy here. So I'll have a form on here. And then I'll put an input of type text, put a placeholder and say search for music. And uh, the name will be find. Um, actually in here, what I'll do is I'll put these guys inside a div. So cut that, put that here. I'll give this div a class of form control okay no not form control sorry <laughs> form group <laughs> like that and this though I'll give it form control instead of form group form control and I'll put a button here that for submission give it a class of BTN like that and then search 
like this. Okay. On this other side, maybe we can put something like follow us. Maybe add a couple of break tags here. And then we can put um, some icons here, right? Now I'll just drop the actual SVGs here because these are actual images, so we can't change their color. And I want to change their color. So, hmm, what to do, what to do. So there's, um, if you go to the Bootstrap website here where there are icons, you can search here. Let's say I want to search for the Facebook icon. So I know it's named Facebook. So SVGs are just, um, what do you call uh, this? They're just text, really. So if I come to the assets folder and go to icons, it's an SVG file. Let me search for Facebook. So this one is facebook.svg. I can drag this into my text editor and you can see it's just text. So let me copy this and put it down here. Paste like that. It's the SVG for Facebook. I can remove this part, it doesn't do much. Let me uh, change the width to maybe 25 pixels, width and height, that's fine, okay. The rest will leave as it is. This one is BI, so it has a class right there. So I can use that class because every SVG in here will have that class. So I'll say dot BI, and then I can say something like um, margin, uh, maybe, I don't know, uh, five pixels, and then 10 pixels on the other side. Okay, so if I come back and refresh, this is what I have. I have a black thingy there. Uh, let's do the same for Twitter. So there should be a Twitter one. Drag and drop. Copy everything. And get down here to the end. Add the next SVG. Remove this, I don't need that. Let's change the width to 25 pixels. Okay, and finally, let's do one for Instagram. Drag and drop in our text editor, copy everything, and let's paste. Okay, let me remove that. Change that to 25. Now, the only reason I'm doing this is because so that I can change the color of these guys. If I don't need to change their color, I don't need to import like this. I can just load it like a normal image. So if I come back and refresh, you see now I have this. Uh, maybe the margin is too much. So let's just put five pixels all around. That should do just fine. All right, so let's add some uh, footer. So this one will need some padding, 20 pixels maybe. And then let's add uh, background color, very dark, 444. And let me use display flex as well, display flex. Okay, good. And then in the footer, we have footer div those three divs and each one should have a flex of one let's add some padding maybe 10 pixels and that should do okay so if i now refresh this is what i get as you can see here dark now i need to change the color of these svgs so i'll do that but before i do that let me change the color of the a tags so footer a like that and I'll say color white okay and then let's change the colors of the SVG to white so I can just look at this fill color here and change it the current fill color then let's just do white there so you can put any color code in there RGB values etc etc so this is what I have here 
and footer color should be white as well so let's come here and say color white okay there we go much better but I want this designed a lot better so form control dot form control first of all the width should be 100% I want some padding of 10 pixels and what else I want the border changed so border to be solid thin very light gray all right let's see that boom search and then let's do the button now dot b btn this button will have a border of none padding uh, 10 pixels left right 20 pix uh, 10 pixels up down uh, 10 pixels left right and what else the cursor should be a pointer and that should do it let's see and there we go but I want these joined together so I'll, I, I put them in a class or form group so say form group like that and then what I'll do is say display flex and that should do the trick right there boom okay so there we go so we have a search search for something follow us and some links so our footer is done so you can design this as you wish uh, no hassle no problem featured is acting like part of this so let's move it outside the section so where is this uh, let me move this out to there like so so that section title let me copy that I don't think we've added a class for that so section title let's say margin uh, left maybe 20 pixels let's try that okay cool but it's leaving too much space so maybe section title should not be it should just be a div let me just add div like this oh no not what I expected so let's leave it B. Hmm. Okay, I'll change the padding for content. Where is content? Uh, where is this? So I'll put ten pixels on the left, right, uh, top, top, top down. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe zero pixels, or maybe let's put four pixels here. Make it even smaller. Mm -hmm. still it seems uh, the section title isn't doing what it's supposed to do so let me just add font size uh, 20 pixels and then uh, font weight bold that way we can remove the h3 and put just a normal div okay let's see that okay so there we go featured down here everything looks cool for our design now we can put some um, some of this on the other side as well so let me grab this let me get this uh, footer div wait 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 from here copy let's go up up to the header so if you want to add these guys to the header you can do that so inside the music website here let's drop down and put these guys SVG let me move them one step forward like that let's change this coloring to maybe light blue I don't know if that's even a color ah there we go not looking so hot 
let's just say blue okay cool but I want them moved to the other side so what I would do is I'll add a div here oops I'll put these guys in a div uh -huh. move them over and then main title I'll give it a display of flex as well so where is main title uh, okay there we go so they are right next to each other but i want these on the other side so i'll say let me come down here i can just add a class here or let me add a style oh um, let's add a class instead uh, i'll call it socials uh -huh. so right here i can do header dot socials and then add a flex of auto and then um, I don't know text align right let's try that okay so they go to the end there great um, things are looking good now we can add the um, what's this I want us to be able to click on these and then they pop up for now they shouldn't show okay so let's start by putting a style code hide and this one will have a display of none okay good now these guys are the drop down lists if I put a style of hide here this one on the categories will not show so it's here now but if I refresh it's gone so that's how we do it but let me remove that hide let's use javascript to add it there so i'm going to go down here and put script tag like so and then i will say collect all links so i'll say links is equal to and i'll grab the document dot query selector okay i want to select all items so query selector all that have a class so I'll put a dot a class of drop down so there we go so every everyone that has a class of drop down list like that and then I'm going to loop through all of them so I will do a for loop like this and then loop through links and each link inside it it's going to contain oh each one of these drop down lists should have a class of hide. So I'll say class list dot add hide. So all I'm doing is grabbing all of those drop down links, uh, drop downs. So it shouldn't be links actually, it should be drop downs. Drop downs like that. All the drop downs add a class of hide to them. So if I refresh, they are gone. But I want to be able to click on them and show remove that that class so what we'll do is i'll grab all links secondly so this should only um uh, actually this just works here let me grab all links in the header so first of all i would say document dot query selector instead of all i just want to grab the header tag because i just want this to happen in the header and then once i grab it i'll use a query selector all to select all items in there that have a class of nav item okay those are all the links no drop down actually drop down because I want to add an event listener to each one of them for a click so here I'm just going to say for drop downs Ah, wait. So these are not links really, but 
uh, they are drop downs, right? So <laughs> let me just use drop downs again. It's okay, I can override it here because I've already used it here, so I can still override it here. So here I'm just going to say dot add event listener. Uh, take care of the capitalization here, very important. We are listening for a click. So when somebody clicks, let's run a function. So we'll put this function like so. Okay, like that. So let's put an E to capture the event there. So all I want to do for now is just to show an alert when I click on one of the drop downs. So if I refresh, click on music, nothing happens, but click on category, I get an alert but it refreshes, so I don't want it to refresh when I do that. So what I'll do is on every drop down here, um, I'll put a hash like that to prevent reloading. So let's do that. Click alert, okay? Click alert, but the others don't do that. Okay, so we're on the right track. But instead of this, I wanted to show the it's drop down once it does that. So what I'll do is I'll grab the event, which is this one, and to grab the item that was clicked, I'll say e.currentTarget. Okay, like this. Okay, e.currentTarget. Uh, wait a second. Uh, dot query selector. Mm. Yes, I'm looking for a particular item in there with a drop down list uh, class. Then I'll say dot class list dot remove, or instead we'll toggle it. We'll say dot toggle the hide class. So toggle means uh, if it's there, add it. If it's not, uh, if it's there, remove it. If it's not, add it. So look what's happening there. Very cool. The only problem is I can click multiple of these and show them like that, which is not ideal. So the first thing we need to do is capture all of these, put a, and remove the, okay. So we should capture all of them. So here to capture all of them, I'll just say var, uh, Wait, it's drop downs again, but this time I'll use links is equal to e dot current target dot parent node. So we get the parent of what we have clicked. Let me show you this for a second. So we click this part here, nav drop down right there. And then if we get its parent, it's this one. So once we get this main nav, then we can find all uh, drop down list items and put uh, a hide on them so that they don't show anymore. So, so all links parent node dot query selector all and get everyone with drop down list like that. And then of course, let's loop through all of them and I'll use links. And then dot class list, okay, dot add, let's add hide to all of them, except the one that we clicked. So we know the one that we clicked is called e dot current target. So I'm just going to put an if statement and say if e dot current target is not equal to the current link here, if the, it's not the one hide it. So I'll just do that. If it's not the one, hide it and then toggle the final one. All right, so let's see how that works. And if I refresh, click, click. Okay, so it doesn't uh, loop through these guys. Let's see, if current target is not equal to that, then do add hide. Okay, let me remove the if statement and just see if it will work without that. 
Okay, so it doesn't work still. So let's see. This one is probably not a valid. Uh, oh, I forgot the dot here. Sorry. That's the thing with programming. Uh, forget one thing and that's it. Okay, so it's working now. The only problem is it doesn't toggle anymore. If I click this twice, it doesn't close that. And that's why I added this to make sure it can do that. So current target. Um, it seems it's not recognizing the... Hmm. Ah, this is a drop down list. Okay. So links I drop down list, this will never be that. Hmm. Okay. So query selector drop down list. Okay. Let me grab this and put it here. That should solve the problem. Okay, so refresh, click, click. Okay, there we go, it toggles now. That's nice. All right, so uh, we are done with the home page now. Let's create other pages like the login and uh, login page, actually, and the admin page. So those are the two other pages we need to create. Now, before we do that, let's do responsive design. So because I want to see this in responsive view. So if I click here, go to responsive design view. So we will need to watch for the scroll bar down here. The moment we see a scroll bar, then we have a problem. So let me go down here. The sc scroll bar should only happen at 350 pixels or less. So 350 here, let's put that at 350. Let me see, there's a scroll bar, but even before that, there's a scroll bar. So that's not good. So let me do this, see what's causing the scroll bar. And this is this part here, the main header content. So what I need to do is go to, let's see here, header, display flex, but, uh, I need to add flex wrap. Oh wait, not here, but on the on the main nav. So I'll say flex wrap wrap, and then each nav item should have a limit, minimum width, so to allow it to wrap around, which is maybe I don't know, eighty pixels. Let's try that. So if I refresh now, that's much better. So you see it wraps around and then goes like this. The problem is this is being squished and that's not what I want. So logo holder, flex one, no, let's, uh, in fact, let's just give it a width of 100 pixels period. Let's try that and let's so it's being squished still, even at this point. But what we're going to do is, let's zoom in. Let's go up to maybe 768. From there, we'll consider it, um, even this, we want to change that at 768. So what I'll do is I'll put a media query down here. This is a breakpoint. So whatever styles I put here, will uh, let me put max width, 768 pixels. So 768 pixels and below, any styles I put here will take effect. So the first thing I want to do is on the header, uh, this header has display flex, but I want to change the flex direction to column at that point. So you see what that will do. If I refresh, this is what it does. So flex normally takes things left and right, but flex column will take them up and down. So these things have become columns like this instead. That way they all fit nicely, nice and cuddly like that. Okay, that alone should fix this problem here. 
and then he ate uh, you can redesign this as you wish i want to do the same thing here on the footer okay because the footer is getting squeezed too much down here so let's do the same thing for footer flex direction column at this point and uh, that solves the responsive design view as simple as that so at this point we get this okay so the divs are now top uh in a in a line like this the way they normally are but then when we get to a certain point they go back to their flex uh thingy like so okay cool so our thing is responsive and that's nice make sure we don't have a scroll bar at this point okay that's cool so let me close that and we are good to go okay so let's make the the login page and other pages as well so what i'll do is i will get all this uh, styles cut everything out of here everything within styles and remove the style tags all together let's go to assets css right click new file paste Select all, shift tab to bring them closer to the wall. Save, and this one is style.css. You can call it anything you want, as long as it's .css at the end, save as all files. Great. Okay. Now, of course, if we save this and try to reload, we'll have a problem because the CSS file isn't active. So we have to link it. And it's inside assets, CSS, style.css. And with that, we have our thing back. Now we need to put our JavaScript as well in, the, in a separate JavaScript file. So let's grab everything inside script, cut this. Let me move this like so and put source here and put assets slash js slash uh, we're going to call it menu dash popper dot js save that go to the assets folder js right click new file paste save this as um, menu dash popper dot js make sure you save as all files save okay so if i right click now or refresh it should still work all right good okay so css styles index page cool now with all this in mind let's copy all of this and create our um let me copy everything create a new page in public right click new file paste save and this one is the login.php uh, page save as all files okay so login.php and save now this is a login page so it should look different so at the end of the public folder let's put login.php and it looks the same but let's delete the middle part especially this section with content so delete that mm -hmm. okay <clears throat> and let's remove featured let's remove this image as well the hero image so now what we have is this so now we can create a login page. So I'll put a div here. <clears throat> Let me give it a class. And this one is the, um, I don't know, login holder. I don't know what we can call it. So I'll put a form here. Make sure the method in the form is post. 
and then let's put an input of type uh, email okay let's put a class here form control mm -hmm. let's duplicate this this one is password and then down here we have a button login of course we'll have a class of button also let's put another class BG uh, blue that's what we we'll call it okay so let me go to the CSS let me close this SVG files let me go to the CSS and add BG blue anywhere uh, maybe after button here dot BG blue so I'll put a background color of blue and then color of white I can duplicate this a few times mm, purple orange so this one can be purple and this one can be orange all right cool so refresh and there we go this is what we have let's add a few more styles I want margin style uh, dot m1 this one will be margin 10 pixels okay and then we can have another margin m2 which, which can be 20 pixels sometimes you just want a margin at the in the x-axis in the left and right right so that's when we can get mx and then let's put dash left duplicate this and put right All right then we can have also one on the y-axis which is top and bottom so top margin top margin bottom okay this one is my my all right so that we can use these because you see here we have this problem they are too close so on the login page i can put classes here on form control even this one I say my1 like that so that uh, there's spacing like so then before that let's add a maybe h3 tag and say login like that okay so login there maybe h2 is better all right so we have the login page and we can put our logo at the top here if we want so center img assets slash images slash logo dot jpg let's see what that does and there we go uh -huh. looks cool but too big so let's try the class logo will that work well here no yeah, it won't okay so I can just add a style here and say width um, 100 pixels okay cool maybe 150 it's too low All right so login whatever and click login here Bloop. all right so with that uh, we can move on to the admin area and create our admin section but maybe let me make this rounded a little bit let's add uh, border radius of 
50%. Let's see that. Okay, much, much better. Maybe an actual border so we can see what's going on. Solid, thin, CCC. All right, so there we go. Now let's create our admin section, right? So I'm just going to copy everything from the login page. Right click in my public folder, new folder, paste, save this as admin.php and make sure I'm saving as all files and save. Okay, so back here I'll do slash admin. So currently it looks like the login page. Okay, that's fine. But um, where is the section? So this one, I'll name it admin content. Oh, I think content is fine. Let me just remove everything else here like that. Okay, so what we'll change is instead of music website here, we'll just put admin area like that. Okay, everything else remains the same. So admin area, and let's change the links where they go. We don't need, we do need categories, but not with a drop down. So I'll remove this. Let's duplicate this. Uh, categories. So instead of home here, we have dashboard. Dashboard, uh, music, categories, artists. We don't need this about us um, or contact us. We don't need that. Okay, so this should do just fine. So refresh, dashboard, blah, blah, blah. Then what I want, I don't need this search down here, follow us, we don't need all of that. So I'm going to remove everything. Uh, <clears throat> Sorry, the footer here will have a style of display block so that we remove that uh, display flex. And let me remove everything from here. I'll just put some text like copyright, at, and then uh, 2022. Let me center this. Close the center tank like so. Okay, there we go, much better. Then in here we'll have, um, uh, what do we have? I'm going to change the color here. So this section, uh, let me add a style and say minimum height, 200 pixels. And then let me put an H3 tag to tell me where I currently am. And that's currently on the dashboard. So refresh, we are currently on the dashboard. Why is everything centered though? That isn't cool. Content, is it from content? Let's see, admin content. Oh yeah, it is from content. Mm. Okay, so let me go to the style and I'll add one dot admin content. I'll add padding 20 pixels and then I'll add, I think that's pretty much it. So now sometimes the, uh, the CSS won't update. So you have to go to the admin, <clears throat> to the CSS there put a question mark and some random text. This will force the browser to reload the CSS file. So that's what's happening here. Now I want to change a few things here. I want to add a background color to this style. I'll say background color, pink, <coughs> excuse me. So I refresh and there we go. I don't like this color. So I'll inspect, go to the color and adjust it until I like it. Okay, maybe something like this. Let's see, maybe here, yeah, yeah. We're getting there. I want this color like so. 
Okay, copy that. Now you can color these things as you wish. So up to you what color you want to use. Maybe it's too bright. I'm not sure. Uh, no, there. I think that's better. I don't know if I changed anything at all, but there we go. And then let me change this as well. Uh, the header. Where is the header? Uh, yes, header div in the admin. So um, I'll go here. Let me just add the style directly. Background color. Uh, let me try blue and then color uh, white. Okay, great. So refresh and there we go. I'll need to change the links in here. So let me just add a style tag directly here and just say header a and then put color white okay let's see that okay much much better but i don't like this color so let's inspect the header uh where is the header right here yeah let's change this color to something more reasonable mm -hmm. right something like this. I want it to be very different from the uh, main area so that you can tell that you're on the um, on the admin section. So background color instead of that blue, we'll put that. All right, then we don't need these socials anymore. You can put some other content here, but let's delete the socials. Yeah, refresh, and there we go. Okay, so we're on the dashboard, everything. So this looks very different to, oh, wait a minute. Uh, these guys here, the drop down list uh, should have the same background color. Let me do dot drop down list. Background color, since the text is white, let's put uh, 444 like this. Okay, let me see if that works. All right, much, much better. Okay, pretty cool. So far, so good. Now let's start adding some PHP to all of this because now we are ready to start coding. Okay, so let's shift things up a bit. So in here, we want to move things. So I'm going to open the folder containing these files. So these are the files we've created, login, admin, and uh, index page. So I'm going to rename index page to home.php, okay? Then I'll cut these guys from here, go up a folder, inside app, inside pages, and paste them here. So they are now inside pages, okay? So uh that's really all we needed to change from here so i'll close that let me close all files here do not save since we removed them all right so now what we need is to add a few files <clears throat> to change a few things in the public folder so public has no html folder now and this means if we try to load uh we'll see this okay so now let's right click new file in the public folder and save. This one is our index.php file. So that's our real index page. Now, if I go back to my page and refresh, I'll get an empty page, which is fine. So let's add some PHP tags over here. And let's just echo uh, home. Oh, I don't know why I keep typing J. Okay, so now we have home there and our PHP is running just fine. Okay, now let's change things a little bit. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to add an HT access file to the public folder to change things because right now, if I type anything here that does not exist, 
it will show me that page was not found. So we want to avoid this. I want to make it so that whatever I type in here, for as long as it's not a valid file, um, it's going to send me to the index file instead and not say not found. So whatever we type here, we should go to the index file. Unless it's a valid file, then we'll open that file. But if it's not, uh, we'll be taken to the index page. Now to do that, we use some HT access code. So I'm going to copy that code from here. You'll see it in a second. So in public, I create a new file and paste this. So copy this and write it exactly as you see it. So what this is saying is that uh, rewrite condition if it's a valid file, load it. If it's a valid directory, load it. Otherwise, send everything to the index.php page and any query string uh, you will add to the URL get variable here. So this you can type something else there. <coughs> just, just remember that that's where you'll find it in the get variable. So. The reason we're doing all this is we want clean URLs. We want clean links. So I'll show you the difference. Let me save this. Now save this file as .htaccess. Okay, save as all files, save. Good. <clears throat> so normally links are like this, website.com and then slash, uh, and then it's like this now after that. Um, page is equal to or maybe let's say uh, yeah page is equal to category and id is equal to four okay we want to change that website to that link to look like this website.com slash category slash four okay so this is much cleaner for search engines in google and all that so that's why we're doing all this process and avoiding to do things like this, which is the normal way of doing things, but we're going to be uh, doing it this way. So right now what's happening is that you see here it was saying not found, but because I've put the HT access file, if I refresh, I get the index page, even though this is not a valid link. So it doesn't matter. Now I'm just going to put category and say, country music, something like that. So you see, I still get the home page, regardless what I do. So every link that we click on this website will go through the index page, regardless what that link is. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Then let's add the robots.txt page as well and copy that, I'll paste here. So just type it as you see it. You can disallow Google to index any page by just putting disallow and then putting your link to that particular page. Here, it's just telling it that any page with slash admin will be ignored so that it doesn't need to index that uh, in this Google search engine. So we'll call this one robots.txt. Now, Keep in mind, it doesn't force Google to do this. This is just a suggestion to Google and tell it, don't waste your time with any page that has in the admin in it because it's not needed in search engine. Okay, so echo there. Now, what I want to do is every, uh, I'm going to create a variable called URL here and say, get URL. And then I just want to print, uh, URL so that we see what value we've gotten. So the reason I'm getting this from get URL is because this is what I told it in the HT access file. I told it to send any query string into URL in the get variable. That's what I've done. So any content of the link right now, the URL will be there. So if right now I refresh, you see that I see that category slash country. If for some reason it's it's empty, then I'm going to have a problem because URL will not exist. So all I need to do is put two question marks to say, if it doesn't exist, just give me the text home like this. So I'll refresh, that way I get home. If I go back to country, I get country, uh, category country like that. Now using this, we can use our own code to split this text using the slash there so that I can get category and say, okay, this is the page I'm looking for. 
and the rest of this will mean something else. We can use this to read data in the database, but for now, the first item will always be the page name. So we have URL like here, and also we'll be using sessions. So let's do session start here. We'll be using sessions to save data. Okay, so we have our link, then let's explode it right here. And also, I just want to create a simple function here to allow me to see things more clearly. And then echo a pre-tag. I don't want to be echoing pre-tags all the time because I use them a lot. So then I could grab this and put it there and stuff like so. Okay. And then I can call that function. Instead of using printer, I'll use show like this. It looks much better like that. Okay, great. So URL contains something and then I want to split it. So I'll just say URL is equal to explode using the slash and explode the current contents like that and then show what we have. So now we have this, see, we have category in zero and country in one. Also, I'll make sure I trim this because sometimes people will put a slash at the end. So we should, we shouldn't get that empty thing there. So I can tell it to trim this. And tell it to trim the slash like this. Okay. Uh, oh, this won't work well because in case this doesn't exist, then we'll have a problem. Okay, let's leave it be. Not a big deal at all. We'll just ignore that one. Okay, so there we go. We get what we want. That's the page name always on zero and the rest we can use uh, later. All right. Now we need to organize things a bit better. Functions should not be in here. We should have a functions file. So this is where we go to the core and I'm going to create a new file, two new files. So I'll save this one as init.php or autoload.php. That's up to you what you want to name it. This one is the one that is going to require all files. So I'll say require, what am I typing? functions.php. Okay. And we're going to have also a config file for configuration. Then we'll have a functions file. And what else? That's it. So this one, let me save it as functions.php. Right click again and save this one as config. Dot PHP. So in short, any file that you put inside core, you have to include it in the init, otherwise it won't be included in the final project. Then let's go to the index page and require that file right after session start and just say require init.php. But init is not in this folder, so we'll do dot dot slash app slash core slash init. Now I can remove this function and put it in functions.php like so. Okay, great. So it, everything still works as intended. All right, so with all that in mind, we have our pages here. Now all I need to do is find out which page someone wants to load by looking at the URL and the first item and then try to find that page here. Now, sometimes that page will not be found, so we'll have a 404. So we need a 404 page. So here I'm going to get the login page. Now, before I do that, actually, I will need to separate the header and the footer. So let's do that. Now, what I would do, first of all, is grab the first item from here because it will always be there because they'll always be home, even though this doesn't exist. So I'm going to create a file and say file is equal to um, in this case, I'll do dot dot slash app and then slash pages. 
and then slash um, mm, what's this uh, admin let's do that zero and then uh, dot PHP at the end so please add this dot here don't miss it because of this one and then let's check and say if file exists file okay like that then let's require that file okay if it does not exist let's load a different file instead the 404 so I'll say require the 404 page which will be something like this 404 oh hey great so right now okay so there's no 404 page um, I'll right click new file and just say page not found save this as 404.php okay so that's what it is but if I go to the home page the home page is here let's do that as you can see very cool so there's the admin page as well and there we go now you see the admin page things are not loading properly and that's because because of what we've done to the system here the CSS files and images don't load very well so we need to change a few things so now before we do that let's go to functions and I'm going to create another function called function page this is a function that will load a particular file from the page pages folder so all I wanted to do is return a specific uh, link so the link should look something like this so copy that let me come to functions and paste right there so the file will be here and then dot php at the end like that okay so easy peasy this way when i come back here instead i will do this i will say uh, page and also string to lower make sure it's lowercase like that and that's it so like that page and then copy this again here it will be page uh, it just makes typing or uh, loading pages a bit easier so the 404 page that's one the, if I want the home page I just click type home so let's see if things are still working uh, line 9 there's a problem where is that okay so I'm missing one bracket so there we go okay otherwise things work fine now before we deal with the uh, okay let's deal with the admin section though so I'm going to go to admin.php this is really not where I wanted to do this uh, let, me, let, me, let me deal with the home page so let's go back to home page everything seems fine until I type home like this and then we have this problem okay so the CSS is not loading so let's go to the home page that's because I need to put absolute paths to everything here so I'll select everything that has assets slash it's because of what we've done to the HD access file now we need to use absolute paths all the time so I'm going to use PHP to echo so when I do that I do a this is the same as doing PHP and then echo but instead I'll just put an equal sign and I'm going to create a, um, a variable called root this is going to be a constant that's why it doesn't have a, uh, a dollar sign so root slash and once I do that everything should work now root should be created in the config file so I'm going to do this with PHP I'm going to define uh, root as a constant so I'll say root so I'm using constant because it's available everywhere it's a super global that way now I need to create the link to the base link so in my case it's HTTP so you need to include the uh, the server name as well localhost 
slash uh, music underscore website that's my folder and then public don't put the slash at the end so when you put this on your uh, web server this you're going to replace with www.mywebsite.com like this so when you are on your live server you're going to do this it's important you have to change that otherwise it will keep redirecting you to this now it's hectic sometimes to change this so we can put an if statement to simply check whether we are on the server or we are on localhost so So there's a global variable called server in PHP. And if we check the server name, it gives us localhost if we are on localhost. So if we check if it's on localhost, let's do one thing or else let's do something else. So local machine, that's our definition. If not, define it here. All right, very good. So we've defined root from here and that should work. Now let's refresh and everything works fine. Let's go to the admin and see. Okay, so admin section still not working because we haven't changed. We need to change everything to root. Uh, let's try admin. So let me go to the admin section as well, admin page. And I would do exactly the same thing. Select everything with assets slash control D to select every other instance of it. And then put the root slash. And that should solve the problem. Okay, there we go. Even the JavaScript works just fine. All right. So now I want these links to actually work and take us to different pages. So... Uh, what do we do here? Yes, so let's go to the link thingy and that's in the home page. So what I want to do is separate the header from everything else. So select everything from here up to where the header ends and then cut. Then I'll put some PHP tags. Okay, before I do this, I may lose this data. So let right click, new file, paste. Okay, I'll save this. Now, to show that you can put folders in here inside the pages thingy, I'll just say um, includes, okay? And then this one will be header. Sorry, header.php. Save it as all files and save. Get back here. Now we need a way to include that file. So I'll put PHP tags and remember that there's a function called, uh, let me say require. There's a function called page that gets a page for us. So we'll use that. Now, since the header is inside a folder, we'll just type that folder includes and then there's a header just like that. That should do the trick. So if I refresh, you see nothing has changed whatsoever. Let's do the same with the footer, okay? So I'm going to copy this. Get down here and everything from footer to the end. <coughs> Sorry, I'll paste this here and change this to footer. Then everything from footer to the bottom, cut. And then Inside includes new file, paste, save, save this as footer.php, save. Okay, great. And just like that, we have included the footer as well. So now every page will have this uh, header and footer. So let me go back to the header. And by the way, Futa has a login page here, so I can just give a link. Now, every link should start with root and then slash the name of the page. Okay, just like that. Let's go to the header and home page, which is this one. 
will have root. So let me just copy this up to there. Header, uh, root, that's it. The home page is just root. Music is root slash music. And uh, these are categories here. Uh, so what we'll do is, actually we'll load these categories later. Uh, artists about contact, these ones will start with root and then artists like that and then about and then uh, contact. Okay, here same thing, profile admin login slash admin and slash profile here and slash log out there. Very cool. Okay, uh, what else? Mm, the image here is root because it takes us to the home page. Mm -hmm. All right, that works wonders. And let me remove the active uh, part here. I'm going to use some JavaScript to add the active class when I need it. So refresh and there we go. So now if I click on music, I get page not found, but our page not found isn't looking so hot. So we need to put our header and footer there as well. So I'm going to go to 404 and page not found, we'll leave it there, but Let's put that here, let's put that there. There's an SVG in the icons, so I'll add that SVG. But for now, let me add the center tag like this. And then I'll put H, maybe H1 or H2 tag, and then move this into there. At this point, I'll add an image. The source obviously should always start with root. And then assets icons, uh, there's a face frown dot SVG. Let's add a style. Let's give it a width of 100 pixels. That should do. So let's come back and refresh. Oh, things are not working as intended. Why? Mm. What's going on? Uh, Okay, this is not the, we needed the header. Sorry about that. And refresh. Okay, there we go. So we don't have a frown face. Let's, let me type frown. Hmm. I think it's emoji. Ah, so frown. It's not face, it's emoji. So like I said, you can go to the Bootstrap website and search the icons right here. It will show you uh, emoji and you can check whatever emojis you want here. So now this is what I get, page not found. So you can design your page not found as you need. So music, category, homepage, see, things are working now. Yeah, about us, if I go to admin, I go to the admin section. Okay, back here should take me to the home page, but I haven't uh, added things to the uh, the admin section. So inside admin, I want to create a new header for admin as well, a different header. So I'll grab this up to where header ends and cut it, and then put PHP and say require page and then this one will be inside the same includes but we'll say admin dash header like that and close it so i've cut that let me save this and inside includes right click new file paste save uh, this one will be all files same header i'll just put admin at the beginning admin dash header and in the same way back, where is the admin page? I'll copy this. Oh, wait, copy that. And this is the footer right here. So I'll paste here, very simple. And then 
cut all of this. Change that to footer. Save. Right click in here, includes, paste, save, and this one footer, but with admin. Admin footer. Let me change this to give the current year. So I'll use PHP and say date y, like so, and then close that. Okay, so it always give the current year. So if I refresh, things are working as intended. But let's go to the admin header and change a few things. I want root here for dashboard is slash admin and music these are admin links so slash admin always slash let's say music and categories and artists and same thing here log out profile let's do that slash oops slash no 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 log out this one takes us to the profile. Now the profile is in the, it should be in the admin section, but we'll change that later. And instead of this, we are already in the admin section. So here we just go to the website and then log out. Okay, cool. And let's put the root on the logo as well. Um, admin area. Okay, looking good. So refresh, click, click, click. Let's remove the active part here. I'm going to use JavaScript, like I said, to do that. So there we go. So now I can go to the website, come back, go to the admin uh, website, mm -hmm. logout page. Oops, what am I doing? I wanted to click the logout page. Okay, page not found. All right, but so far our website is navigating as it should. Now we just need to make the rest of the pages like login and stuff. Okay, so let's add a function to our popper JS that will select which one of these is active. It will do that by comparing the current link to the link in one of these guys. And then if it finds one, then it will mark that as active. So it's easier to do this with uh, JavaScript, I guess, instead of PHP. So I'm going to go to my assets and uh, JavaScript, Popper JS. So after it does all of this, let me just move everything back like so. So after it does all of this here, we can tell it to do something else here and set which page is active. So I'm just going to get all links. I'll use links again. So it will be, it will get from the document and query selector and get the header. And then in the header, it will do a query selector all to get everything that has, uh, which is nav item. Okay, so all nav items granted. Then let's do a loop through each one of them. We we'll just call use links again. So inside the nav item, there's an a tag which has an href. So here I'm just going to say if I'll put an if statement to check if links the current nav item dot query selector, and in there we're checking for the a tag that is in there. Okay, if the a tag in that current the reason we're doing this, if you look at the header, um, nav item is this div. Inside there's an a tag which has an href. So that's what we are looking for at this point. So we can say dot href. Okay. If that is equal to the current uh, link, which is window.location.href like that. If those two things are the same, then we'll mark this one links i dot um, dot class list 
dot add active okay that's what we're going to do so it's as simple as that let me refresh uh, let's try the admin area oops so yeah yeah there we go so let's inspect uh, the console and see if there's any um, so there are no errors here it's just not working so sometimes it could be that it's cached so let's make sure that's not what's happening let's put a random number here on the JS okay so that's not what's happening so it's just an error somewhere so let's see uh, links I dot in fact let's not use this let's use children uh, zero which is the first item in there which is the a tag because usually there's only that item anyway so dot href let's see if that works hmm okay what's happening here mm. okay so what I would do is I'll do a console.log to see what's inside links just to make sure that things are good okay so back here uh, inspect go to the console and let's refresh the page okay so there's a node list and it's empty so that's where the problem is I guess so uh, we grab the header and nav item is that what it's called yes nav item hmm okay okay I think it's the dot that I'm missing here as usual sorry about that okay so that's working now that's cool let's go back to the home page website there it's not working because the href uh, has a slash at the end so let me just duplicate this put the or double pipes like that or you can use the actual or and here I will add a plus slash like this okay that's because this one has a slash the one in here doesn't so that's why it couldn't match but as you can see now we have oh what's happening here this is not cool uh, nav item oh th the only reason these have this is because they are matching with the current uh, link here so I guess that's why mm. okay so for as long as the link is matching it will put a underscore under there so yep okay so this is good now if I go to my admin section uh, we should get similar results all right cool okay now let's deal with the admin section let's deal with users so let's go to the admin uh, header and add one more here which is users so we can add edit and delete users all right so we have a header here in the admin section uh, so let's add a few functions to help out let me close all files first so let's go to functions we'll add a lot of functions here so the first uh, function we should add is a connector to the database because we need to create a database so function DB connect that's what I'll call it okay so it should return a connection now the connection will be equal to new PDO we're going to use PDO to prevent uh, SQL injection so we can use prepared statements here I'll put a string which I'll create shortly and then I'll put DB user a constant which I'll create shortly and the DB password which I'll create shortly let's create a string and this string will look something like MySQL that's the driver name 
and then there's host name is equal to localhost in our case and then we'll put a semicolon and type db name is equal to we'll create a db called music website underscore db now because we're going to use constants instead uh, i'll remove this and just concatenate the db name the database name and then here i'll have db driver concatenate that so remove this and then in the middle here we'll have db host so i'll do this like that okay great then this will create a connection so these guys i'll declare them in the config so i'll do this i'll have define and then oops db host okay hmm. localhost right so let's do a couple of these uh, so they here there is driver driver is mysql there's the host there's the user there's a password and then there's db name itself the database name so here we have music website db password is empty string now if you're using mump it could be root user is root okay so we are putting these here because your configuration will be different on the local server and on the online server so you can put for your local server for online server so here i can say for online server and then here for local server right so these will change depending on your database configuration on your uh, web server okay cool so with that in mind this function should run then we need another function uh, called db query which we'll use to run a query so this one will give it a query but since we're using prepared statements we'll need to give it some data as well in form of an array now I'm doing is equal to array empty array so that it's optional to give this because it's not every query that requires variables inside so you see what I mean here let's return false if things don't go well but let's try to get them to work well so we create a connection which is equal to that DB connect function okay so we make a connection and then once we make a connection here we will do uh, now to know that we are really making a connection here i can do this and say show db connect so it should tell me that this db is a valid uh, pdo object okay so line 20 there's a problem where is that uh, okay what is it saying it's saying unexpected token full colon so i added a full colon instead of a semicolon there so sorry my bad okay so fatal error unknown database music website db so the fact that it's telling me this this database is not found it means the connection is working so to create our database we go to localhost slash php my admin PHP my admin one word so local slash PHP my admin then right here click new to create a new database so music website DB create now that error should disappear refresh and that error is gone now instead we get PDO object which means we did connect to the database very good now let's try to create the one that runs a query so to run a query we first create a statement that we will prepare so we'll use the connection and do this and prepare like that 
So we're using these arrows because uh, PDO is an object, it's a class. So this is how you run uh, functions inside a class. Here, I'll put a query. Now, if this statement went well, like this, then we will do a check to see if things will run. Uh, we can execute this thing. So we'll say statement execute. Now, during the execution, this is when we will pass in if there's any data that we brought in. Uh, so let me explain this a little bit. You can watch my other videos where I explain this in detail. But a query can be something like this. Select all from users table, right? Now, in this case, this query does not have any variables in it. So this will be empty will not supply that. But there's a time maybe you want to say where ID is equal to three, like this. So select from the users table where the ID is three. Now, instead of putting the three itself here, we'll put a variable instead, like ID. And then we'll supply a an array that will contain that ID inside it. So what will happen is this thing will prepare the query without the variable itself. So it will be prepared and they need to leave a slot here because it knows there's a variable coming here, a value, an actual value. Then that value will be supplied through the array in the data here. So when we execute the query, it's going to fill in the blanks. OK, so if there's nothing to fill like in this query here, then this empty array is fine. Right. So if the execution went well, then we can expect to get some results. So we'll say if, uh, wait, 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 yes, actually, if check, then let's fetch some result. So result is equal to uh, statement, fetch, or Now we can specify specifically how we want this fetch to occur by doing PDO like that and then say fetch ASOC. So this will fetch an associative array. If you want objects, you can fetch OBJ like that. Okay, so let's check if the result came back with something. So we'll say if is array result if it's a real array and, okay, the amount of items in the array is greater than zero, then let's return the result. Otherwise, we return false. Right, great. So this is the function that we run every query that we supply. Now I'm going to duplicate this function again because this one returns an array of arrays, but I want a version that returns just one record. So say DB query one, everything will be the same, except right at the end, we'll return just the first item in the array. Okay, great. Another one is we need a message, something to send messages once we've done something. So I'll call this one function message can supply a message or leave it empty. And then I can say clear. So let me explain. So when we save, let's say you save a profile or you edit a user, it's a good idea to have a message at the top of the admin section that says profile saved successfully. So this is the function that will do that. So when we call this function, we can either check if there's a message or we supply a message for it to save. So this is why I've put is equal to empty string so that it's possible we cannot supply this and it will just default to an empty string. Clear has a default value of false. Now clear, we'll set it to true if we want the message cleared from the session because we're going to keep these messages in the session. That way when we refresh the page, the message is still there. Okay, so in this case now, uh, 
return false if things don't go well. Okay, so the first thing is if uh, message is set. So I'll check if it's not empty. I'll say if not empty message. So if the message is not empty, we add to the session. So in this session variable, like this. So in this session, we'll add a memory location called message and then set that to message. So if the message is not empty, we save the message. Else, the message is empty. If it is, we just return the message. So return, I'll create a variable called msg. And let me copy this here. And say msg is equal to whatever message is in there. Now the reason I've set it to this is because I want to unset the message here if clear is true. So say if clear, then unset the message like so. Okay, cool. So what we're doing is if a user supplies a message, we just save the message and that's it. But in case we are being asked, if we don't supply the message, then we are being asked to check if a message exists. So it will come to this and then we return the message itself, which means we'll know there's a message in here. But if clear was set to true as well, we'll clear the message as we read it as well. Okay, so uh, great. This is good. What other functions do we need? Anyway, we'll create the functions as we need them because right now at least we can do a few things in the admin section. So let me go to the um, admin.php right here. So right at the top here, before we do anything in the admin section, we need to add some PHP tags. Make sure the PHP tag is right at the top here. Then we can do a few things, okay? So what I want to do here is there will be items that I will need to grab. So first of all, there's the, um, what's this? The section of the admin page that we want to view. So we'll assume section is equal to, remember that URL um, that cont zero contains the page. In this case, it's admin but one will contain maybe what tab we are on. Maybe we are on users, because right now if I click on users or music or users, then we're going to have admin slash music. So that music is a section of the admins uh, part. So I'll set it to that, but if it doesn't exist, I'll set it to no, like that, an empty string. Okay, so let me save that and let's try to refresh. There we go. Where is the header for the admin? Uh, admin header, looks like we have a mix up here. There's music and music here. This one should be users. All right. So let's go to the users part here. Okay, so admin area and we have a what else do we have here? Okay, so admin. Uh -huh. So we have a section and we have an action as well. So the next one will be considered an action two, and the last one will be considered an ID. That's on three, like that. So what I'm doing here is setting these values. If they exist, if there's an item in URL one, set it as a consider it a section identifier. If there's one at two, consider it an action identifier. If there's one at three, consider it an ID. So in this case where we have all of them, it could look something like admin slash users slash edit slash four. So what this does is that it tells us that we are on the admin page, but we are on the users section, that's the users page. And then we are doing an edit on a record number four. 
So this four is the ID. This is the action we are doing. It's either edit, delete, or add. And then we're on the users section of the page. So uh, yes, that's what it is. So that's what we are getting in that case. So when we have a link like this, all these will be filled in. But when we have a link where we only have, let's say users, the other two are not filled in. So they're going to be equal to no like that. And then here we can use a switch statement. Okay. And for switch statement, I'm looking for the particular section that I want here. Okay. So let me look at the section so that I can do something different depending on what the section is. Now, if the section is users like this, then I will require a file. And this file will be taken by the function page. And this file will be inside inside pages, I'm going to have a folder called admin, and then slash inside that admin section, there will be users like that. Okay, great. Then let me copy this. If we don't find anything we're looking for here, uh, we're going to have a 404 page in the admin section as well. Okay, if the section is not found, great. Then there's this another one here. I'll duplicate this. There's a users one, but there's also a dashboard. So dashboard like that. Okay, great. So let's create these files so that we can load them. So what I would do is inside pages, right click new folder. This one will be the admin folder that will contain all the admin pages. So right click new file and save this one as dashboard.php. Then again, I'll right click new and then save this one as 404.php. So this is all for the admin section. Then if I go back to admin, everything I added here is for the dashboard. So I'll cut everything from here. They don't, there's no need for a closing PHP tag here at all. So I'll remove that and I'll go to dashboard and paste. Okay, great. I'll do the same for the 404 and then just say um, page not found just like that. Okay, good. So let's come back here and see how that works. Uh, failed to open file admin users.php. Okay, so users does not exist. Let's create it in the admin section. Paste, save. And this one is users.php save. And I'll just put users here. Like that. Okay, cool. So refresh, and there we go. So we have users, we have, oh, dashboard should be a thing here. Uh, let me come back here to admin. So if any section does not exist, instead of setting it to no, let's set it to dashboard. That way it defaults to the dashboard. Uh, great, so dashboard there, users, and then page not found, page not found, dashboard users. So we are on users. Let's do what we want to do on the users section. So in users here, uh, I want to have uh, to check the section here, what's going on. So what I want to do is put PHP tags and check what action we want to do. Remember, we are on the user section but then there's action as well, okay? So if action is equal to add, we do one thing. We are adding a new user. So I'll put an if statement, say if it's equal to add, let's do this so that we can put HTML in the middle here. So we won't use the PHP entirely. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this. And this one is edit and duplicate again. And this one is delete. And then duplicate this one. And this one is else, but put a full column there. 
and then let's add else here so if action is equal to add we'll load whatever is here else if action is edit we'll load here if we are on a delete we'll load here else we're just viewing we'll load here and then end if as simple as that so for the view this is where we see all the users so i'll put this inside the else section there like that okay so here i'll just put some text this one is add this one is edit this one is delete okay this one is view where there's users so if i now refresh we see users there but if i do slash edit at the top here you see it says edit and then if i say slash delete it says delete okay so that's how we are going to be showing these things now we need a table here to show all the users that we have currently even though we have none but that's fine so what i'll do is i'll add a table i'll give it a class of table all right now right here i'll put a button as well and this button will be add new You can decorate these things as you wish class button and then i'll say bg uh, purple like that okay and then i'll tell it to float to the end so let's refresh and there we go we have add new now I don't have float end I guess in my JavaScript file, uh, CSS file. Do I have it? No, I don't have that class. So let's let's add it float dash end, which is uh, float right. Okay. So it's not working yet. So let's go to the admin header. I just want to change this number here so that it can refresh okay there we go so we have add new there that's cool so add new but bg purple did not work um why let me come back to users bg purple it's because i didn't type it properly huh oops Let me move that there. Okay, great. All right, cool. So we have add new users. Now this button here should take us to the add new section. So we need to put a link. Okay. So the link here will obviously be root to start with. And then slash we're in the admin section we are in the user section slash add simple as that okay great but here we need a table so let's put table row table header and this one is the user id let's do this id uh, we're going to have a username we're going to have an email and we're going to have a date when this guy was when this row was created and what else username email we can't show the password uh, maybe the user role we can show that role and then here we need some actions to take okay then let's duplicate this again oops let's duplicate this okay and instead of table header now we have table data so td there we go so let's see how this looks and this is what we get but it doesn't look very much like a table so let's go to our css and add some styles for our tables down here so i'm just going to say table dot table and here i'll say width 100 percent and then uh, border 
collapse let's use collapse and then let's do dot table t h again dot table t d and then let's add a border solid thin light gray let's add some padding um, i'll duplicate this yeah actually let's add some padding to all of these <coughs> padding 10 pixels so let's put five pixels and then 10 pixels on the left and right okay so let's see here there we go so at least we have a table now um maybe you want to put these in the center it's up to you okay but this is what we have so cool now let's add new so if i click here to add a new row i'll click boop i go to the add section so here i need to tell myself what i need in the in the table here so the add section is here so whatever i add there will show up so here i need a form the method is post let me add an input and this one is of type text this one is username mm -hmm. cool uh okay let me not waste time here let's put a placeholder username so you can decorate these things as you wish of course as always let's put a value that's empty and then let's duplicate this this one is email of type email as well and let's put email here as well let's duplicate this and let's add some classes as well so this one is password password here as well let's duplicate password and we'll say retype retype password name is still retype underscore password all right now let's add some classes mm -hmm. so class of course we have form control let's put my1 so that there's spaces between them let's add a button here and this one is uh, create I guess let's add a class button and BG uh, orange maybe I don't know let's see how that looks okay so there we are we have uh, maybe we need a title here title um, I don't know why this is putting suggestions on this for some reason uh -huh. so in the form here I will have an h3 tag and say um, add new user okay something like that add new user uh, maybe this should be save we should have a back button let's put type is equal to button so that it doesn't submit and then let's put back and we won't put any bg color on this one let's put a link to the back and this one is root slash admin slash users let's make sure the button is inside the a tag like so and save 
I want to float this to the other side, so I'll say float end. All right, good. And also, I want uh, this to be inside a div. So let me move this in. I can add a class here, but maybe let's just add a style and say uh, max width um, 500 pixels, margin auto. That way it's in the center, like that. Okay, so add new user, and we have everything we need, email, blah, blah, blah. If I click back, I, I'm here, add, I'm here. So this is really cool. Now we need to add a role as well, a user role here. Um, this will be a select option. Oops. Uh, we'll say select row. And then one row is going to be user and the other one will be admin. Let's add values here. So value, the first one has an empty value, this one has user, this one has admin, like that. Okay, but here we'll need a name and that's row. We'll need a some classes, form control and my1. All right, cool. So let's refresh, and there we go. So select a role, and this is what we have, user admin. Okay, cool. So when we click save, it refreshes the page as needed. But uh, we need to, we need to run some PHP now to actually save this content into the database. Now, in order to save into the database, we need some tables to save to. Okay, and um, we need to have error correction as well here. In case there are errors, we need to see them. So what we'll do is I'll make preparation for uh, displaying of errors. So I'm going to add something here, a small tag and say, this is an error, like this. So let me give this a class of alert. Um, is it alert or oh, error? Let's try error. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, so there we go. Now if I refresh, let me do this. You see this is an error. So let's go to our CSS and add some error stuff there. So anywhere here, I don't care where I add this, I'll just put error. And error will have color of red. In fact, that's pretty much it. That's really it. Now it doesn't refresh as usual, like I said in the header. Uh, just adjust the link to the CSS there. And there we go. So this is an error. That's nice. Now let's go back to uh, users right there. So we've added an error here. Let me leave some space so that we can see what's going on. Like this, like this. So I'll copy this small, put it here, put it here as well. Mm, same thing here. And here as well. Oh, so the password, we only need one of these. So no need for the password retype. That's fine. So at least when we get any errors, we're going to see this. There'll be an error for this, an error for that, etc., etc. But we only want to see these guys when there's an error for that particular part. So uh, I would do this put PHP and say if if not empty there's going to be a variable called errors and then it's going to have 
we check, let's say for example, username in this case. If that's not empty, close that. And then close that PHP tag and say end and if like that. Okay, so what we are doing is we are checking if there's an error for username and then display it here. Okay, so I'll copy this part and do this. Select all errors and paste it there. Oh, not that. I'll do uh, echo like that, like that. Okay, but not everyone is username. This one is email. So I'll just do this and say email. And then this one is for role. And then this one is for password. Oops, what have I done? Password, like that. Okay, that way we'll see errors when we have those errors. So refresh, now we don't have errors. So let's create some PHP tag that will generate those errors, etc., etc. And uh, we do that by creating a table first. Let's create all the tables that we need. Okay, so to create tables, let's go to our database. The database we just created, it has no tables. And let's add a few tables. So we're going to need a users table. So let's hit go. So that's the users table. We will need an ID for this. We'll need a username. We'll need an email. We'll need a password. And then let me add two more rows here, go. We'll need a row to know what role this user is playing and we'll need a date to know when this user was created. So ID is fine. Let's make sure we have auto increment on and its primary key. Let's put variable character here on each one of these. Even row as well. And date will be date time. Then we have to tell it how much of this uh, we need. So username can be 30 characters long. Email, maybe 100 characters. I don't know. Password, 255. Row maybe 10 because they're things like admin, user, they're very short. So with all that in mind, let's hit save. Okay, so we have ID as a primary key and auto increment must be on. Uh, username, anything we're going to use to search with in this column, we have to give it an, an index to speed things up. We will want to search user by username, that's possible. Uh, we may want to search by email, that's when logging in. We may want to know, uh, search by date, but maybe that's unlikely, but let's just add it there. Also row, maybe we may need to. So let's save that, that's fine. So let's create another uh, table. So I'll just click new here under this. This table will have songs, for example. So let's just name it songs. There's an ID that we need. We need to know who created this song. So let's put user ID. We need to know the artist ID. Which artist does this song belong to? We need a thumbnail for this uh, song, which is image. Let's add a couple of more columns. We'll need the file itself, the uh, the audio and we'll need a category ID as well and we'll need a date to know when this song was created and we'll need some views to know how many views it has. Uh, what else do we have we forgotten? Um, I think that's it for now and let's save. Now let's make sure auto increment is set on the ID and primary key as usual. And of course, these are all IDs, except the image is variable character, the file is variable character. Uh, this one is date, time, views is int. So all these with variable character, let's put 1024 here and 1024 there. The rest is fine. Let's save. Now, um, 
if there are any columns that are not required when setting up this row and when saving data, you can make sure you select no, so that no is yes on them. If they are optional, that's it. So user ID will search by that. So let's add an index. We may need to search by artist ID to see what songs they have. We may need to search by category when the user is searching for songs. We may need to know the date or the views. Maybe we need to order by the number of views that uh, somebody has. Okay, let's add one for the date as well. Okay, so that's it. Then, of course, we're going to need artists and categories since we're including them here. So new table, let's add uh, categories. So there's an ID, auto increment, primary key. Uh, the category name itself, variable character. Let's put uh, maybe 30, I don't know. And we may need to know whether it's disabled or not. And this one is tiny int because we just need zero or one just for true or false. Let's add a default value of zero. And that's about it, really. Let's save that. We may need to search by which one is the, uh, and we may need to search by the category name itself. Okay, cool. Now let's add artists. So in artists, we have an ID, auto increment, primary key. And then uh, we have the name of the artist. And what else do we have? Maybe the bio. So ID, artist name, bio. We may want to know who created this artist profile. So we we'll put user ID there. Bio can be text. We don't know how much we're going to need. Variable character. Uh, maybe the username could be, I don't know uh, how long usernames can be. Maybe 50 at most, 50 characters. And uh, let's hit save. We can always add new columns if we need to. Artist name is something we can search by, even the user ID we can search by. Okay, so we have all the tables that we need. Now you can export this database you've just created afterwards by clicking on the database name and clicking export, and then make sure you select SQL and then hit go to export it. Just in case you lose it or something, you can always import it back or when you're sending it to your online server, you can import it, export and import it that way. Now we have no data in any of these, especially in the users table, we have nothing, but let's change that. Okay, so now we're about to add a new user, which is cool. Um, so at the top of this, this is where we'll put all our PHP. So I'm just going to put PHP. Now, like I said before, make sure there's nothing before this, otherwise you have problem redirecting your pages. If there's any space here, it will refuse to redirect because it will tell you HTML has already been sent. So make sure there's nothing there. So to begin with, let's we want to know when something was posted. So we use the server variable again and check its request method. So request method like so. Let's use capitals. So if the request method is post, then we know that we've posted something. Now, I want to be able to redirect uh, if things go well, but I'll create a redirect function like this. And if things go well here, I'll redirect back to the user's page in the admin. So let's create this function because it's not a real function. So let's come down here and I'm going to say function redirect. And to which page are we redirecting to? So we'll supply that page. Uh, to redirect, we use the word header, we modify the headers and tell it that the location we are going to is a specific page. In this case, we're going to concatenate root because root is required, of course. 
then in front of root we're going to add a slash and then we'll add whatever page that we've been supplied to redirect to and then it's very important to have a clean break using die and that's it that's our redirect function so instead of typing this everywhere we'll just write redirect and put a page there so users we are back here let me close all these others that i don't need okay so redirect when things go well now once we submit what we submit it's going to be sent into the post variable like this so we will have username for example so i'm just going to set uh, this content to this so say username is equal to like that uh, username and uh, now before we do all of this actually let's do some evaluation so let's do uh, data validation so I'll put a variable called errors and set it to an empty array like that okay any error we find we add it to this and then check in the end if there are any errors so here what I want to check for is the username username is required so I'm just going to say if empty no not that one this one so if this one is empty then we should complain and say errors username a username is required okay but if it's set let's do another if statement if it's set let's do a preg match so that uh, we check to see if it matches the pattern that we want so username should have no spaces so we'll do this we want only a to z capital a to capital z that's it no spaces whatsoever so let's put a plus for any number and let's put end there let's put our carrot for beginning so big from beginning to end this should only have letters and letters that's it and the subject is this one okay so if that happens then we error a username can only have letters with no spaces i have a series on uh, regular expressions i don't know if i finished it but you can learn a few things from there okay so this is for our username let's do the same for our email so shift d shift control d let's change all these references to email okay great email is required if it's empty and then instead of using preg match let me copy this we'll use filter var so filter underscore var is also another function the variable is this one what are we filtering for let's do filter uh, validate email like that that's how you validate an email so here we just say email not valid okay so the username the email and then we have the password now so let me shift this password yeah, password is required all we are checking for here is let's say passwords do not match so if password if this password is not the same as the retype password then passwords do not match
like that. Uh, what else? We need a user row. Let me select here. A row is required. That's all we get from there. And let's remove that. We don't need the rest of it. Just if it's empty, a row is required. Okay, this is all we need. Now, if empty errors. So if there are no errors at all, that's the only time we are allowed to redirect because we would have saved by then. But otherwise, we do not redirect. So let me try this for now. We validated our data. So let's come back here and go to music website, refresh. Let me do that. Let's leave that empty and that empty. Or well, let's type a username, random username, and let me say save. So now you see, we see a username can only have letters and spaces. So we have errors that are valid. Email is required, email is required, etc. But the problem is the data that I had entered here is now lost. So let me fix that. I'm going to go to the input here. There's a value for each input, right? Let me select those values. Oops. In fact, just here. I want to create a function called set value. And then close that. Set value will check in the post variable if there's an item that matches this key. If it's there, it will echo it. So as a result, we're going to retain our values. So same here, this one will check for email. I'll skip the select one for now and password. Uh, where is the value? Uh, paste. And this one is password. Okay, this one is retype password. All right, now this function does not exist. So let's go to functions and create it. So function set value. And we look for a particular key. And then here we just return an empty string if all fails. But for now, we'll just say if not empty, uh, post variable, and that whatever key that is we've been supplied with, if it exists, then let's return it. It's that simple return the key, simple and straightforward. So now if I refresh, you see that the old data is there. So I'll name myself admin. I want to add an email and save. A username can only have letters with no spaces. This is what I have here. So why is it still complaining to me? So let's check our preg match one more time. Where is this? Um, users. Okay. Let's check our preg match here. It doesn't seem to be matching what I want. Okay. So it should be if not preg match. Sorry about that. And here, even the filter, not filter. So put the exclamation point at the beginning here. So save. So these ones are good. Raw is required. Let's select a row. This is a first user we are adding. So admin, save, and then um, so the row doesn't is not kept. So if I click here, you see I'll have a problem again. So in the same way we have this function set value, let's have another one for the select input. So we'll call it set select. This one will have a key but it also have a value. Okay, great. So what we have here is if not empty. Uh, for a select, it's different. We're not supposed to return the value. We're just supposed to check if the key and value match, then we return the word selected. So let me copy this. We're just going to say if the key in there is equal to 
the value then uh, let's return the word selected like that it's a good idea to leave spaces just in case okay let's do this let's return selected otherwise return an empty string it's as simple as that so let me refresh hmm, didn't okay let's select user save it didn't work so let's see if that key if key is equal to value return selected oh i haven't added it on the other side sorry my bad uh, i should come here the same way i've added set value i should add it on all of these guys on these ones at least anyway okay so instead of set value it said select So we have the key, the key is row, but then we need a value for each one of these. The first one is user, the other one is admin. All right, like this, good. So it compares, the key row, does it match user? If it does, then select this one. So let's see that in action, if I select this and you see it maintains if I am admin so that's what it is let's add the passwords so password is just going to be equal to password and password there and let's hit save so once we've done that we've been redirected which is nice but we didn't save so let's add new again let's try again uh, username is admin oops what have I done okay email at email.com select that save we have this okay so with passwords you can also check if password length is an issue so let's see here uh, retype passwords do not match uh, we can do another else if um, Uh, let's try string length so string length is a function that checks how long a string is if it's less than eight characters then we can say something like uh, password should be greater than eight characters or something like that password password must be eight characters or more okay so that we can have something like that so if i write q q the passwords match but eight characters or more so let's put password here and password there all right now what i need to do is go to my um uh where is this admin header so in the header down here, I want to be able to echo a message. So I'll do PHP. If not empty, or let me just do this. You say if message like that. So if there's a message there, uh, let me do this. okay so if there's a message in here let me echo a div i'll have a class of alert here and we'll say something like um, hmm. oh yeah we echo whatever the message is at that time and then close that now i want to clear the message once i echo it from there so I'll do this, but for now, I'll leave it at false. I'll change this to true momentarily. So what I want to do now is go to the users and set a message every time. 
So the message here is going to be testing one, two. Okay, so I'm just trying to see if I can see a message there. Then let me go to my um, admin header again and refresh my CSS. Let me just type some other random numbers. Go back to the CSS. I want to add a style for alert. Alert, we have a background color of um, red and the color of red again. I'll switch those momentarily. So let me make sure that I have an error here and save. So now at least I get this error here. Why did I get that? Okay, so this means there's a function I'm trying to use that does not exist. Let me remove this redirect. So if you see something like this, right click, view page source, go to the end and you'll see the error, fetter error. Uh, undefined variable message on line 50 in the header admin. Okay, so let's go to the header admin on line 50. Uh, oh, this is not a variable, it should be a function. Sorry about that. That's the cause of the problem. Resend. Okay, so there's a message there. Let me go back to the styles. I want to add some padding of 10 pixels or maybe 20, I don't know. Okay, so I'll inspect this element. And what I want to do is change these two guys. So first of all, I want to lighten the background color a bit. And the color of the text, maybe, I'm not sure. Lighten this one, and then this color of this red, take it down to something like that. Let me change this back. Okay, yeah, something like that. So this is this will be the message there. So grab this, that's my color. I will add it here. Then let's grab, wait, that's the color. And then my background color. All right, cool. So we get a message here. Uh -huh. Okay, so this is the message we're going to see. Let me add the padding here, 10 pixels, 20 pixels, like that. Save, okay, testing one, two. So this is the message we'll get when we do something. So that's fine. So what I'll do is now uh, leave it here like so. Back to users, let me remove that message. So when I refresh again, the message should be gone, but it is not gone. So I should change this to true so that the message is deleted after we see it. And there we go, and there we go, okay. Undefined key message on line 71. Where is that? Mm. Wait. Uh, functions on line 71. Where is that? Uh, ah. Okay. So I should check first of all if there's a message. Uh, Message is equal to this. Message is equal to that. Okay, so I guess I should check if it's not empty. So if not empty, hmm, this, then let's move that there. Okay, 
Let's see if that still works. Okay, that's fine. Now let's make this thing save some data. So we're going to go to users right here. After all the validation, let me remove that back. Right here, I want to create a query. So query is equal to, now the insert query looks like this. Insert into the table name, and then you put your column uh, names there, and then you put your values over here. That's what a query looks like. So db query, and let's run this query here, like so. We will need to supply some values as well, because we'll need them here. And then we redirect. Now, before we redirect, we put a message and say, uh, user created successfully. All right, good. That's all we need to do. Now, in the values here, let's go to our table and grab the columns, copy them, except the ID column because that one is auto increment, so we don't need to worry about it. And then let's put uh, commas here. Okay, so this is what we need. And I'll just copy this, put that there, because I said we're going to use variables here, we won't put the actual values in there since we are using prepared statements. So put full colons there. Don't leave a space between the full colon and the letter, and the word, sorry. Now we need to create the values array. So we'll set this to an empty array like that. That's how you create an empty array. And then we need to add these values. So whatever values we added here, variables, anything with a full colon, should be matched in that array. So here we have one, two, three, four, five items. So even that array should have five items, otherwise you get an error. So we'll do post username. It's a good idea to trim these things so that you don't get any trailing or leading um, spaces. So let's do this for all of these guys email, row, password. Then we have an extra one for date. Now to create a date, we use the date function. We do y, m, d, uh, hour, minute, seconds. So you can uh, this is year, month, day. You can find this on php.net, how to, what letters to use to create the, the dates that you want. And the password must be encrypted. So what I'm going to do is use the function password hash. So it just requires your string here. So I'm just going to cut this out and put it here. Now, password, maybe it's not a good idea to trim the password because maybe someone is using spaces as a password. So we'll not trim it. We'll just password hash it. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Good. This should work just fine. So let's come back and let's save. Let's put password here and password there. All right, then let's save. Boom. So user created successfully. If I go to the users table now and search, you see that everything is here. Username, email, and an encrypted password, the row, and the date. Now we need this guy to be an admin, not a user. So let me just change that directly because I made a mistake there because this is the first user, okay? So that should be an admin. Cool. Now let's make sure we can read the information here and then limit um, who can access the admin area and so on. So we can log in as this user here.
So what I'm going to do is inside this same users thingy, um, at this point where we have the else and we are running a table, I want to read information from the database and loop it through here. So let me do it from, I can do it from anywhere. So let's just put some PHP tags here. And I'll just say rows is equal to db query. And let's run a query there. Simple and straightforward. The query is going to be equal to select all from users, order by ID descending, limit 20. Okay, great. So we will only have 20 records order by the descending order and uh, we'll have rows there. So if rows is equal to something, then we loop through here. So here we're going to check if not empty rows. So if we do have some rows, let's do some stuff. And if, let me duplicate that, let me duplicate this. Let me move these in, move that in. And let me change this if to a for each so that it loops through this. And instead of checking if this is empty, we're just doing rows as a single row. So now row contains the row, one single row of the users that were retrieved. So here I can echo out row ID like that. Okay, good. So I can grab this and do the same for the rest. So username, email, Uh, let's put the row here. What row do this one have? The date, of course. And action is action. Uh, in here we'll have... Uh, here we're going to have images, right? So I'm going to do this. Uh, assets, icons, hmm, what's this one? Pencil, pencil mm, square. I checked this one, SVG. Let me give it a class of, uh, what classes did I add? Icon, was it? Or was it by? I have no idea. Let me uh, duplicate this. So we have one for the edit and one is for trash. There's trash three. Let me refresh. And this is what I get. So these are the icons here. But it seems the BI Let me find if I had added it. Oh, there's margin there. But then there's um, width. Let's make that, I don't know, 30 pixels, maybe. Hmm, that didn't seem to do much. Let's try max width. Oh boy. Okay, maybe it's not refreshing. So let's go back to the header, admin header, and just change these random numbers here so it can refresh. Ah, there we go. Okay, so maybe 30 is a bit too large. Let's go back to styles and say 25. All right, that's much better. And Maybe, okay, if I now go back to users, I can add a link on each one of these since they are edit and delete buttons. So cut that and put that here, put that there, copy that, put it here, 
and let me tap these guys in let's add a link here so this will lead us to the admin slash users slash edit slash and then here we'll add an id from the role so we can identify uh, the thing that we want to edit or delete but this will change to delete okay so if i now refresh you see that if i click on the edit it will show me i'm on the edit if i click delete i'm on the delete all right just doesn't show anything yet the date doesn't look very user friendly so also if i go to the styles uh, where is table i need a background color of a slight gray e e e almost white ah all right maybe white is better Let's try that. Hmm, I can't really decide between these two. I don't know. Anyway, uh, choose your colors as you wish. That's up to you. And now the date doesn't look so hot. So I'll go to functions and create a function because I like creating functions. Say function get date. That's what I'll call it. Whatever date was supplied, I want to make it more human readable. So I'll say return date, put that date in there, but modify it a little bit. So small letter J, capital S, space, M, comma, capital Y, comma, string to time, like that. Okay. So the date function is used to modify dates. So this is the new uh, format I want it to look like. But in order for me to do that, I have to use the string to time function on this date to convert it to an integer and then return it like that. So in the uh, users section here, instead of just running the date here, I can just run it through that function saying get date like so. And then it will return something more human readable as you will see shortly. Yeah, 24th June, 2022. Okay, that's much better. So if I can add another user, so let's try. This one will be maybe John. Let's try john at email.com. This one is just a normal user. Let's put password and password here. And hit save. And there we go. User created successfully and that's John over here. All right, so now we should be able to edit and delete these users, which is much simpler to do now. Uh, let me also, just a minute, where is table? Okay, so I want one for table header only. And put a background color. Background color. 444 and then the color should be white let's see this okay that looks more like a table now all right great so now let's see what we can do about the edit and delete now once we're done with this we're going to use this to create categories and artists as well all right, but before we do that, let's make sure we have some security here because now we have users, we can log in because right now we are not even logged in or anything like that. So let's create some functions that will help us determine when somebody is logged in. So I'm going to have a function here saying uh, logged in. So let's return false if things don't go well. So to determine if somebody is logged in, we're going to have a value in the session called user, an array. If this is set and it's a valid array, then you are logged in. So we're going to say if uh, 
not empty. So if this is not empty and is array, the same thing. And then let's return true. It means you are logged in, otherwise return false. But let's put brackets just so we see what's going on. It's as simple as that. If not empty, this array return true. Then we should also know if somebody is an admin. So here I was just saying is admin. So if this is set and it's an array, and okay, let's check if this is set uh, with row like this. If this is set and the same thing is equal to admin, then return true, otherwise return false. So now we know when somebody is logged in and when they are an admin. Also, we need a function to grab any user uh, column that we want. So we'll supply a column there. And first of all, we check if not empty, the current column that is being requested, let me change row here and whatever that column will be. Okay, so if it's set, let's return its value. Okay, great. Also, let's have an authenticate function so that when we want to authenticate, authenticate, we can do so. Uh, with a row here. So this is where we create this. We just say this user is going to be equal to whatever row was supplied there. Simple and straightforward. All right, cool. So all these functions will help us greatly. So let's start with checking if uh, somebody is an admin. So let me copy this. Let's go to the admin.php right here. Before we even do anything, we must check if somebody is an admin. Okay, we only care if they are not. So if, if not admin, let's redirect this person to the login page. But let's send them with a message, shall we? Please. Only admins can access the admin page. Okay, so that makes sure that nobody comes in here without being an admin. But let me go to the header uh, admin and copy this message displayer and put it in the login page as well. So right here where we have content, where the content starts from, uh, login holder, I will put this. So it can show me the message in case there's any message for why I'm being asked to log in, then that will be it. So right now, if I refresh the admin page, I should be redirected to the login page. But maybe it's the session is still there from a previous uh, tutorial I had done. So what I would do is create the logout page. So pages here, a new file, and this should be the logout page. So logout page is simple. Let's redirect someone to the login page. But let me save this, logout.php. But at the same time, we'll check if not empty the session variable that contains the user data, uh, which is user. If not empty, then empty it. So we're going to unset it with this. Mm -hmm. Now, if this doesn't work for you, you can do session destroy. This will destroy the entire session, and then you can do session regenerate. ID. This will make sure that um, 
you really destroy the session. But sometimes you may have things in the cart or something that you don't want to destroy even after you log out. So maybe destroying the whole session might not be such a good idea. But let's leave it be for now. So now I want to log out. So if I click on log out, I am now logged out. So the reason these are double like this is because they are, um, wait, this is weird. Contact us. Let me go to the header and see what's going on. Uh, no, this one is about artists, contact us, profile. So why are these guys, uh, this is, this one is confused. It should be the login page. This is not working as intended. Huh. Okay. Let me go to the JavaScript popper. And let me make sure the footer has refreshed the JS file by putting a question mark and putting uh, some numbers there. Let me see if that was the issue. No, that's not the issue. So let's make sure the JS popper has all we need. Let me remove this. Oops. Let's see if that sorts the problem. No, it doesn't. Okay. So the mistake is not with um, the JavaScript file. It's in the header. Where is the header? Uh, oopsie. Header. I guess there's active somewhere. Where is, what's going on? This is weird. Maybe the popper is the one with the mistake. We'll go back to footer type. Hmm. This is very strange. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hide class, hide class. What is going on here? Uh, let me remove everything that's doing anything here. Hmm. Oh, I see what's going on. Sorry about that. Um, I think the login page has its own header. Oh my God. Okay, so let me grab this. Sorry, I got lost there. Let me grab this music website up to the end of header, which is here and paste that header instead. Let's do the same for footer. Where does footer start from? Right here, go down and paste. All right, my bad. So let's refresh and everything is good now. Where is the popper? Let me go to the footer and change these numbers so it can refresh. Oh, but what have I done? Um, where is the login page again? Section content, header, includes header. Oh, footer, sorry. That's why. All right, so we are back to normal. Login isn't here. Okay, so at this point, if I log in, I should be taken to the admin. So let me try and say admin. Only admins can access the admin page. Okay, that's good. Let's add a bit of margin on the, on the, uh, alert. Let me add margin bottom. Uh, I don't know, five pixels. Let's do the same for the top. Let's try to go to the admin again. Hmm. Why is this wasting my time? Okay, I think it's doing that because already the thing has been cached. Oh my God, this caching is insane and out of control. Okay, so back to the admin. Okay, 
so now it's got a space only admins can access the admin page all right now if i log in i should be authenticated so uh the login page doesn't actually do any logging in yet so let's let's fix that let me close all files just so we see what's going on if i go to the login page at the top here i should have some php tags to do stuff when i try to log in so we'll copy what's in the sign up uh, or what's in the um, admin users php all this right here so i'm just going to grab everything here there's no need to retype all of this go to the login and paste like that so when i redirect i redirect to the admin page so i'm just going to delete that and then here i'll just say login successful okay so I don't need to create any errors here. There's no need for data validation, so I'll delete all of this up to here. Mm -hmm. Cool. This, if errors shouldn't be here at all, it should be somewhere previous. Okay, so right at this point, I'm going to try and find a row. I'll use this DB query. And uh, the values I'm going to add here, uh, let me copy this, put it there. Look, okay, what am I doing? Email. So just the email is what I want to read from this. So values is just going to have email like that okay so if the row is not empty i'll put if not empty row then we are good to go mm. otherwise if it's empty or if something happens at this point we're just going to put it inside errors so we'll say errors email in fact uh, let's just create a message that would be much better. We'll say message, wrong email, or password. We don't want to tell the user which one is wrong uh, for security reasons, okay? And uh, we don't need any of this anymore. Even this here is not needed. If raw, and we want to get one a record so let's use the one version so if raw is a thing here let's check the password so i'm going to say if password verify mm -hmm. so there's a password here uh, the password comes from the post and that's named password And then the hash is whatever password is saved in the database, like that. So if that is true, then we have successfully logged in. So let's do that. But then we need to authenticate this user with the function we created and then supply that row. Simple as that. Okay, good. Now let's intentionally sabotage this login. Okay, and it, unidentified variable query on line 10. Okay, where is this 10 query? Oh, sorry, we didn't we didn't add a query here, so <laughs> I forgot. Okay, query select all from users where the email is equal to email limit one we just need one result don't leave a space here so select every column from the users table where the email column is equal to whatever email i supply in values here 
Okay, limit one. Great. Let's do that. So wrong email or password. Also, we need where is the users thingy? We need this set value. Where is this value? Is equal to set value that we need it so that uh, if we get it wrong, it still gives us the email we had added here. And the password. So set value email set value password. All right. So I'll refresh again. Wrong email and password. So it maintains that. But let me put the correct stuff password and say login. And there we go. Login successful. Very cool. Now uh, I want this to display my actual name. Okay. This to display my actual uh, name of the logged in user. So if we go to admin page, where is that admin.php? No, no, admin header. Remember that we created a function called user that gets, uh, where is this in the functions.php? There's a function called user close to the end here. This one create gives us any column from the user's row. So if we go to admin area and here where it says, hi user, uh, I can echo out user column and I want the username column here like so. So let me copy this and do the same on the main header, but let's see if it works here. And as you can see, hi admin, very cool. So if I go to the main website, it's still saying hi user. So let's go to their header and there's here where it says hi user. So let's paste that and refresh. Hi admin, very nice. Now there'll be a few problems if I log out. So let me log out. First of all, login should not show once I'm logged in. So let's go to the footer and where is that footer? this page right here. So I'm going to put an if statement and say if is, it's not is logged in, it's just if logged in. So this should only show if I'm not logged in, right? So let's do end if. So I'll put a not there to negate it. So if not logged in, show the login page. This is exactly what we need even for the top there. So if I refresh and wait, I, oh, category and admin have this. Oh, it's because that is selected. Mm, great. So once I click this, that becomes the thing, is it? Ah. Okay, so right now it's not showing and this also shouldn't show once I log out. You see it says hi and then it's gone. So what I would do instead is in the functions.php, uh, the user column, if nothing was found, let's return the word unknown. So, hi unknown, okay. But we don't need to show that. So let me go to the header. Uh, this whole drop down list, this whole drop down for the user should not even be there if I'm not logged in. So, all right, like this. Let's move everything over. So if logged in, show this. All right, so now it's gone. It only shows when I log in. Now I have the login button because I'm logged out and then I can click login. 
and I can go to my website. Now I have that. Okay, click I log in. Okay, so things are good. So now let's do the editing of a row. So if I want to edit a row here, I'll click edit. So let me try and edit John and change his name. So click edit and I get this edit thing here. But not to worry, let's go back to our users file in the admin folder. Okay, so this posting here should only be done on the adding, I guess. Mm. Right, right, right. Uh, yes. The validation is the same though, so I wanted to. Hmm. Okay, so no problem. What we'll do is on the add section here. So this is what we have when we're in the add. So I want to copy all of this from the add up to that end of that div and then put it on the edit section. Paste. Okay, good. So same thing for the edit. Instead of add new user, we say edit user. Uh, yep, everything else remains the same. So if I now refresh, this is what I have, edit user. Now I want you to show me the original information in there. So uh, what I need is to read the data from here. So I'm just going to put some PHP tags over there and read a row and say db query and instead of putting uh, i'm going to create the array right there i'll use an id put an arrow there and id now where is this id coming from this one is coming from the admin uh, page right here this is the id here so if it's there in the url it's being grabbed and put there as we transfer to this. So by the time we get here, we will have ID there. But let me run the query, or let me create the query. Let's say, select all columns from the users table where ID is equal to ID limit one. So since I want only one record, I'll just use the one version like that copy this row. So I only want to show, um, what's this? I don't want to show this, mm, maybe I can put it here and say if mm, not empty, oops. If not empty row, then let's do all this, okay? But then if the row is empty, let's put an end if. This is in the, inside the form, so I'll put this inside the form. Duplicate it. I want an else statement here. Full column. And then I'll put a div here and say that record was not found. I'll put a class here of alert. Refresh. So the record is found, but let's try a record that we know cannot be found. Let's put 26 and we get that record was not found. We still need a back button even with that. So let's put it here like so. Okay, then we can click back. So click edit. This time we found it. So we use the row in the set value. We, I want to create a default value for set value function. So we'll edit the set value function to enable a second param here. 
and this one will have let's say username like so and then copy I'll put this one on email to check for email so I'm just giving it default values same thing here I'll put paste uh, this one is row and uh, which other one password now the password should not have a default value at all it shouldn't just show so what we'll do is we'll go to the placeholder and where it says password we'll say leave empty to keep old one so if we leave it empty we keep the old one so if i refresh i won't see a difference because our function isn't taking into account uh, the default value so let's check this we have set value and set select both of them need a default value let's set the default value to an empty string because it's not always necessary so here i'll just put an else statement so if not empty we we'll do that if it's empty let's check the default uh, so i'm just here i'll just say return default that's all this solves the problem for this one so if i refresh you see it gives me the old values except this one doesn't do yet so we'll also do the same thing here I'll say else and then copy this put that if key instead of key because we don't have a key we will have value and default so let's compare the two if they are true then select it so if i refresh now i have that okay good so if i go back i try to edit the admin you see that's the information i get admin everything is correct let me click here now when i click save it should do some saving so if i go to the users.php in the top here it will save regardless what i'm doing but this part is only for the um, wait a minute this part should only be for when the action so i need an if statement here so if action is equal to add this is the only point at which this part should work so go. let me duplicate this and let me move this inward boom okay so if action is going to add that's when we do this so we need another one for the edit so we'll say else and then we'll duplicate everything here so this is for the edit part so if action is going to edit we go here so everything remains the same here for the validation but for the password password is no longer uh, a necessity right because we want if we want the user to keep the old password they just leave it empty so empty is acceptable now so what we'll do is i'll duplicate this last part and remove this else there that way if i move things inward here we'll say if not empty so if the password is not empty that's the only time we validate it so password is no longer required so let's remove that then we'll check all this and add some errors if it's empty let's just ignore it so i'll need this if statement a bit later so i'll copy it raw is required the rest are fine and then on the edit the query is different but this remains the same now password should only be added when we need to add a password okay when the password was supplied so otherwise it shouldn't be added to the array so i'll put an if statement here if not empty password then let's add it to the array also we will need different queries 
depending on whether the password is added or not. Now the update query goes something like this, update and the table name, which is users, and then we say set, let's say for example, we have email is equal to email, then we put a comma, password is equal to password. We keep going through all the columns. Um, so there's email, there's username, is equal to username, comma. Uh, we don't need to update the date, but the row we do, row is equal to row. And then you tell it where you want to update, where the ID is equal to the particular ID, and tell it to just edit one. Okay, so I've gone through all of the columns, I hope. Then this one is for when the password is available. So I'll copy this. Uh, but let's put one query here at the top for when there is no password. So let's remove password from here. Okay, so we start with that. But if the password is set, then let's replace it with one with the password and add one more value to the array. We don't need date, so let's remove date. So we have one, two, three items. That's one, two, three, good. But we also need the ID because it also has a variable here. And luckily, we do have the ID inside ID. So what I'll do is duplicate this and say ID and set that to ID like so. Okay. Uh, now the only problem is we need to read the row uh, to know that a row exists like that in order to capture all of this. So what I'll do is I'll get everything here, this edit part with row, remove it from there. I will put it here instead where it says action is equal to edit before the posting part here. So right there, it should work. That way we only accept to edit a row that exists, we can sue and row. So if row is false, this won't run. That means if we didn't find a row with this ID, then we don't need to save anything. All right, so pretty cool. Mm, what else? What else have I forgotten? Let's remove this final query here. It's an insert query. Then we'll run this query here. Uh, this one user edited successfully, and then go back to admin users. As simple as that. So let me edit this and write John John, or let me put some numbers there. I get an error. And in this case, I save. Great, user edited successfully, and you can see the name has been edited. Let me take it back to how it was, and save. Okay, cool. I don't think I like these margins here. <laughs> Let me remove them. Uh, so there's alert here, margin bottom, margin top, nope. I don't like those babies. So let's do that and let's save. Okay, it's still cached, but it will edit. So with all that, now we can do the delete. If I click on delete, I want to delete John's account. Uh, we would do exactly the same thing. Let's duplicate this from else here to, let me come down here and control shift D. We don't need the else at the end. I'm wondering how that didn't cause an error. So this one is delete. As usual, we read the thing and make sure it's there. But here we don't need any data validation. So let's remove all this validation code. Okay. We don't need any of this. All the only item we need is the ID. Oops, what have I done? 
Oh no. Why is the delete right here? I deleted everything. Okay, so all we need here is this one. We don't need to check whether password exists or not. So the delete goes something like this. The where clause remains the same. So we're just going to say delete from users and you tell it where to delete, where ID is equal to ID. So we have supplied the ID and it's in the values and that's it. So user deleted successfully. All right, great. Now we should only delete uh, we can't delete the main admin so what we need to check for here is we'll say if row id is equal to one then let's write a message or let's put an error so we'll say errors I don't know where we'll put this one in username maybe is equal to the main admin cannot be deleted okay now we just need to create the UI the user interface so this will more likely resemble the edit part. So I'm just going to copy everything in the edit view here up to the end of the div. Copy and replace the delete with that paste. Like so. Okay, so instead of edit, this one is delete user. All right. Good. So the content in here, we don't really need, uh, we need maybe the error for the username, that's all. But uh, we may need to show the row, what row this, this user is, etc, etc. But let's delete all these error, except for the one with username, because we are using that. So let me remove that. We don't need the password and password retype, so both of these can go. And these inputs, we don't really need them. We just need a div. So here I can put a class div of, uh, actually what I would do is, let me just replace the input with div. Same thing here, let me do this. Let's do div. And then let's come down here and put a closing div on the other side. Let me remove uh, name, type, and placeholder. Simply name, type, and placeholder. Then let me move this set value in here into just the set, the set value into between the div here. Let me remove the value itself. Okay. That should do it. So let's come back and refresh. Delete user. So we have John email, but this is a selectable. So let me remove that. Um, I'm just going to duplicate this and change from email to row. And then I can remove this. All right, great. So user email John. Instead of save, we need uh, delete. And then this BG, I should have added one with red, right? Red, where are the styles? Let me look for purple. Let me try one with red. Okay, in the admin header, I'm going to change my random text here so that the uh, the file is refreshed. 
Okay, so delete back. Now if I try to delete the main admin, let me try that. Oops, back. If I click delete and click delete, I'll get the main admin cannot be deleted. That's fine. If I try this one and delete, user deleted successfully and he's gone. So let's recreate John again. Uh, user password password and let's see all right so there we go very cool so now we can edit delete um we can add edit and delete a user so very important that's how we manage users like that and we can also change the user role to give him admin status and there we go now he's admin so just like that let me put that user save okay very very cool now we can get everything we've done here and use it for categories for example so I, before we create music we need to have categories and we need to have artists so let's do that with categories which is much easier so i'm going to grab everything let me save this uh, where is this users so this users file we've created here is the template for the rest of them so what i'll do is i'll just copy everything from the users and then go to admin that's pages admin right click new file paste everything and save instead of users this one is categories categories and save so uh, let's see mm -hmm. mm. okay so all we need now is to start editing things in here and everything will be fine so i'm going to go to the admin controller here and make sure i have something for these guys so shift d d d brick 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 so we have users we have categories we have artists we have um wait music do we yes all right that should cut out for everyone so let's go to categories right now and this is what we get okay so this one will cause errors i guess but categories exists nice now we need to change the look of things so let's go to categories.php here so any reference to users should be changed to categories so i'm going to select users make sure it's case sensitive select all references to users and say category like that okay good even user as well uh, maybe not so much okay i will just leave it as it is maybe here category and where is this category as well so creation editing and the deletion right there all right so we don't need this here on the delete part there's no category um, prohibited from deletion and that should work just fine okay so let's start with viewing the categories themselves so we go down here and here's the query so select all from categories order by mm -hmm. so if i now refresh this is what i get so categories okay 
let's change that okay so categories now categories have how many columns let's go back here and check category and disabled that's it so category and whether it's disabled or not so i'll just use active so it's easier to remember like that okay so same thing here i'll change username let me change all references of username if that's quite a lot to category and that's it and then i will move i will remove email i will remove row i will remove date action remains as it is that's fine so back here refresh and there we go id category active uh wait what else did they <laughs> should have removed action shouldn't have removed action okay one two three four so one two this should be here disabled uh -huh. all right so refresh and there we go okay so add new if we click add new we supposed to add new here uh, let me find the word user with a capital u let me find all of them and replace with category okay let me refresh there we go add new category and category name here and uh, let's change let's change what's in the ad so this is the ad we don't need password and retype password and this one is select um, let's see if it's active select active there's just yes and no so let's uh, let me change raw to disabled every reference of raw should be changed to disable boat like that okay so back to the add section this one right here so category and select hmm. so the values here are yes or no so yes no but the actual values yes is disabled is one and the other one is zero so let me make it disabled like that yes no so here the value again is one and here is zero yes or no disabled uh, i don't think we need an error for this but let's leave it be so there's a category name let's remove email we don't need that so let's refresh mm -hmm. so category name uh, let me look at the placeholder and then uh, whether it's disabled or not serious so good now with this let's go to the top of the page where there's add and we post so category is required now a category also maybe can have special characters maybe you can have spaces i don't know if you want spaces in your categories you can put a space here and then if you want special characters like the and just remember to put a slash to escape them maybe a dash um, dash and whatever others you want uh, category letters and spaces 
you can put the correct error message that you want. So uh, email, the disabled part doesn't really need to be validated. So disabled is required. Uh, no, let's remove that there. It's just the category name that we need to deal with. And then here I will put one. Okay, there's disabled here already. So let's remove this. Let's remove password. Let's remove date. So insert into categories, category and disabled. These are the only things we need. Same thing here, category and uh, disabled. Okay, great. And that's it, really. Cool. So let's try one category here. Uh, so maybe the first category will be pop music, disabled, uh, no. You can leave it as a default, uh, zero will be the default. Okay, category created, and there we go. Very nice. Let's try country. And let's see. Okay, good. Uh, let's try R and B. R and B. Mm -hmm. Let's try dance music and save. Okay, so we have all these categories here, which is nice. And uh, let's change this. Active should be yes or no instead of this. So in the view, let's go down to categories uh, here where there's a table. So where it says disabled here, what we can do is put a question mark and say, if it's true, uh, there's active, is it active? Uh, let's put no there and then yes there. And then semicolon, I guess. Oh, there's no need for a semicolon. This is an if statement that says if this is a one, okay, if this is a one, disabled is one, then you say no, active is no, because here it's active. Otherwise say yes. So these ones, because disabled is zero, which means active is yes. So let's see that, and there we go. So if I decide to edit these, let's say I add a new one and say, um, dance hall and i set it to disabled yes so this one is disabled so you see active is no okay but let's set the editing now if i click edit this is what i get so this one is correct but everything else isn't so all i need to do is go to the add section and copy this select part copy that and copy this and come down here so there is category but the rest are not needed okay all of this up to here and paste okay and that's really it uh, disabled but I need to add a row here so let me copy that because this didn't have it paste and change this to disabled and that's it. So if I now refresh, this is what I do. So this one is disabled, and that's yes. If I click on this one, disabled, no. So let me change this to say disabled, no. Save, but if I save now, uh, I don't know what will happen at the top here. So I have to make sure action is equal to edit. I put the right things in order. So category, let me look for the preg match of this previous one. So I'll copy this pattern and put it right here as well on the edit. Okay. And that's all I need to validate. No password, no disabled, nothing. So, boop. and of course, category only, disabled as well. I need the ID, so I'll leave that in there and update categories, set. Category is equal to, I don't need this if statement. There's only one way to do this. Category disabled, 
where ID is equal to ID, and that's it. Edited, save. So this is gonna work. If I now save, it has changed it to yes. Everything remains the same. Okay, what about the delete? Let's delete dancehall. Okay. Same with the delete here. Wait, 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 wait. Let's see, when deleting, everything is okay here. But let's go to the view file on the delete. I don't need the email. Maybe disabled. Let's refresh. And there we go. Uh, maybe we don't even need that because we just need to show the user that this is the one you want to delete. Okay, so back. If I delete and click delete, it's gone. Okay, as simple as that. Now we have users running and categories running. Now let's do the same for artists. Now artists is a bit different because it's going to have um, it's going to have images as well, but everything else remains the same. So it's just artist. Let me see the columns here in artists. So just the artist, the bio, and the user ID. Oh, not really. Uh, oh, the user ID, yes. And the name. It's the name and the bio. That's it, really. Okay, so back here. And... Uh, hmm. Yeah, we missed something. We need an image for the artist. So let's go back to structure and let me add one more column. This one will be image. So 1024, variable character and save. All right, very cool. Oh, let me go back to the structure. User ID has a key. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so that's what we need to do next. Categories are done. Let me, uh, I think I like this version better. Let me copy the categories version and right click here, new file, paste everything and save this one as artists.php, save. So I've saved it in the admin section here. This way, if I click on artists, I get something that looks like categories. But, um, let me start changing things. Every mention of categories, let me select all of that and change it to R, T, S, T. Okay, like that. Also category should be changed to name. Okay, great. Uh, what else? Mm category here with a capital. Let's try and find all that. That one is artist. Okay. Mm -hmm. What else? What else? I think that's about it. Uh, there's artist and then active here changes to bio. No, no, no. Actually, we just need the artist and his image. That's all. So artist name, image. Maybe let's swap these two. Let's put image first, and then the name. Or really, it doesn't really matter. Let me leave that so that I don't confuse things. So disabled is not a thing. So here we just put image. So this artist image. Let me remove these question marks here. And then edit, delete. Okay, cool. So back here, let me refresh. It still says categories, but let's change that to artists. All right, then. Okay, so we have the artist, the image, and some action. Now let's add new to add a new artist. So I'll click add new, add new artist, artist name, Instead of select default uh, disabled here, we're going to put an image. So let's go to the ad section here. Now, this is the ad section. Now, in order for a form to, because we need an image, in order for it to carry an image, we need to put an encoding type, ENC type of multi part 
slash form dash data. I hope that's how, that's how we write it, but you can Google it if you forget it. So add new artist, and this is the artist name, artist name. And uh, what else? We don't have to select disabled. Instead of this, we'll add an input instead of type file. And I'll still put the class name the same way. Form control, my one okay just like that disabled is not a thing so remove all that uh, we can change this error to image in case there's an error for the image so i'll say image there oh no 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 it's named the name is image yes okay save so let's refresh all right so artist name and an image so in this case, uh, artist name, let's try um, uh, Diamond, that's probably his name. Let's browse an image. So in my images here that I downloaded, I think I do have Diamond's image. Uh, I'll select this one. Okay, so a selected name. If I click Save, we may have problems, so let's go to the top and see exactly what's happening. So in the add, we only have name. Name is required. Mm -hmm. So the name can have these and spaces as well, so that's fine. Uh, there's name. There's, um, there's no disabled. Let's change disabled to image. And then we need one more, which is user ID, so we can know who created this um, this particular use uh, artist. So we can do this by using the user function and getting the ID. So user gets us the row of the user that's currently logged in. So we're getting the ID column from there, and then we can use that here. So I'll do this and say user id but don't forget the semicolon there okay cool uh, the image would not be in post image we'll create a, a variable called destination that's where we'll put that so if there are no errors um, wait let's let's validate the image as well here mm. Now, image is not in posts. Image is in files. So I'll say if um, not empty files. Wait, what did I name it? Image? Mm -hmm. That's the name of the file thing name if this is not empty then let's validate the image else if it's empty let's add an error and complain that an image is required okay an image is required and yes otherwise let's copy that image now if it's there first of all we need to create a folder to put this image and the folder is going to be equal to uploads slash now we check if it does not exist so we say if fire exists folder if not fire exists let's make a new directory and we'll make the same folder but let's give us permission to access it and let's make it recursive there. So I explained this in other videos, just type it as it is. So we've created our directory here. And then let's just do file, put contents. I want to, us to put an empty, um, 
an empty index page so that no one can view what's inside our folder if they access it just for security reasons so folder dot and then we concatenate so it's upload slash index.php and just save empty emptiness there like so okay so if we create a new folder let's add an index.php file there for security reasons then mm, now we are ready to move the to upload the file and it's as simple as saying move uploaded file file and destination okay and that's it so what's the file name the file name is inside files image oh no wait files image and tmp underscore name like that so of course i explain this in detail everything i'm doing here in other videos but um okay i can actually show you what's going on here so what i'll do is i'll put die here so that we don't move to this stage and then let me just show you what's inside here so i'll just say show like that so let me save and there we go so this is what you get from the files um, it gives you the name of the file that you sent uh, the full path to the file the type of file so you can check here that it's a valid jpeg or png and then we have temp name this is where it's stored temporarily then we are moving it from temp name to whatever destination we want and the size of the file and there's to make sure there are no errors as well so you can use all of these to figure something out if there's a limit in the file upload size you can use this to figure that out if there's an error you can use that etc etc so let's use type and error in our situation so what i would do is i'm going to say let me copy this in fact let's just do this if this uh, error is equal to zero like so that means everything was uploaded well uh, or and the type here of file now if you want to uh, to add multiple types no problem you can just say something like uh, allowed file types is equal to let's make an array this image jpeg as you saw in there and then there's also image png i don't recommend any other formats so we can use if in array the needle is what we are looking for which is that the haystack is the array the needle is this we are looking for the type that was applied so this function is in array it checks if a value is inside an array and returns true or false uh, depending on the situation so here this is the needle we're looking for the type that was supplied from the uploaded image and we are looking for it inside this array Okay, so if it's allowed and there's no errors, then let's do that. But, wait, what is this? Oh, we already had that, sorry. Uh, let me remove die. So if there's an else here, we have another error. So here we can just say image not valid. Uh -huh. we can say allowed types are and then let's concatenate we can implode our um, our array so implode what implode does is it gets all the values of an array and implodes them together to create a string 
So it will say image not valid, allowed types are, and then it will show this image slash JPEG image PNG at the end there. All right, if everything went well, we move the uploaded file here. But we need to tell it what the destination is. So of course, destination is going to be equal to the folder. That's number one. And then what do we add to it? So uh, folder plus the file name itself. Whatever the original file name is, and that's it. All right, so that's the destination and destination will be saved as image in there. So this is how we deal with images. So if now I continue with this, refresh and resend, now we have added an image for real here. Okay, very cool. But let's show the image here instead of what we have done here. So let's go down to the end for artists here in the search. Where is this? On the table. So instead of showing this image, we'll put an image tag. And then this becomes part of the source. Okay. Then let me add some styles here. I will say width 100 pixels height 100 pixels object fit cover okay let's see how that looks so it doesn't really show an image right that's because the image needs root so slash okay like that and there we go so there is our image, very cool. So we can add more artists. We have Diamond, uh, let me browse. Uh, who's this one? Uh, what's her name? Let's try Ed. How do you spell, spell Ed Sheeran? <laughs> okay, so we have Ed Sheeran there. Let's add some more. Uh, Jennifer. Is that, is it double N? I don't know. Anyway, do your thing. There we go. So at least we have several artists now. Let's add some more here. Alicia. Alicia Keys. Okay, so there we go. We have successfully added some um, some artists here which is cool. But what about editing and deleting? So let's try this. I'm going to try to edit this one and there's JLo. We need the image as well. So let's go, let me copy this image tag right there. So let's go to the edit section and this is the part right there, edit artists. And just after the artist name, we have the image part. Wait, let me put an image tag there. Let me copy from the new artist. There's an input there. And remove all of this and paste. Okay, cool. Uh -huh. Now let me do back. Let me add a new one. And let me try to add some text and say, save, an image is required. Okay, that's cool. Let's try and add something that isn't clearly an image. So I'm going to try, let me add a video, okay, and hit save. So image, no valid, <laughs> it should be not. Allowed types are image JPEG, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. So there we go. That's working fine. Uh, cancel back. Now let's try editing. 
So there is our image of our artist. Let me even change this to 200 pixels, I think, so it's much bigger. Okay. Jingle. Why is my battery low when I'm connected to power? Okay, there we go. So Jennifer Lopez, and then we can browse for a new image and save. But let's see, we're supposed to be able to save without... Okay, so let's go to the edit part. Mm -hmm. So most of this will be the same. Um, let me grab this. Copy. Let me bring it here. Don't remove the ID there. It's required. So name, image, user ID, ID. All this will be changed. And then there's update artist, set, set name. Uh, we should just add some more. Disabled should be changed to image. And then let's add a few more. User ID is equal to user ID, comma. And then what else? Image, name. So there's name, user ID, image, and then the ID. Okay, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Now we will need an if statement here because image is not compulsory. If there will be times when it's not there and times when it is. So we need a way to know this. So what I'll do is there's this part where we are doing the image thingy. So I'm going to copy all of this. All right. And Put it here. Paste. So this is the image validation part. Everything goes exactly the same way, except I need to know if I, I added an image. So I will actually, I can know by checking if this value exists, destination. So what I'll do is I'll move this out of here. So say if not empty destination, then we have an image. So I'll do that. Okay. Then I'll duplicate this, put in at the top there. Then move one of them into the if statement. So this one has image, this one shouldn't. So let's remove image, remove that comma as well. So with this one, we'll save the name and the user ID. Um, what else do we save? Here we'll add an image if it's there and then save. So name edited successfully. This one should be uh, artist. Okay. Mm hmm. I think this does it. Yes, yes. Uh, there's name here. <coughs> Artist deleted successfully. This remains as it is. No changes there. Uh, even this one is to be artists created successfully. Okay, so let's try and edit here. Also, on the edit, if I go to when the image is empty, I shouldn't give an error saying an image is required. So let's remove this as well. Okay. Because it's not compulsory. Right. So here, if I type Jennifer Lopez double Z and save, it has changed, but the image has remained. So let's try and edit this time. Remove the Z. Let's give her a different image, shall we? An image that is clearly not JLo and save. Okay, so the image did not change. And why is that? Hmm, interesting. So browse. What is this one? Oh, this is a JPEG. It is. Okay, so. 
image did not change. So why did that happen? So if not empty, we're on the edits, right? Uploads, blah, blah, blah. There, there. Allowed destination, file. Everything looks fine here. Uh, let's see if it will know when I add an invalid file. Where is that? Here. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, I didn't know. So it looks like things didn't go as planned. So it didn't even try to upload an image. If not empty image name. What's going on? What's going on? Hmm. In files era and in array file type allowed destination. Oof. What happening? Okay, in a case like this, what we need is to do show files, just to show that uh, it's sending something. So let's click edit, let's browse, and let's do that and save. Okay, so it didn't even reach that point, so which is a good sign. Oh, wait, what's going on here? If the message is edited successfully, it means we got here. But how come? Oh, that's because it's redirecting. Okay, I see. So what I'll do is I'll stop it from redirecting. So edit, let's come down here and, oops, what's happening? What did I do? Okay, there we go. So let me stop it from redirecting at all. And let me show what's inside files. All right, so click edit. Troubleshooting 101. Okay, so it's an empty array. Okay, so that's the reason why. So everything is fine. The reason why is because we didn't put this encoding type like I had said. So copy that from the add section and put it in the form that edits. Okay, and that should solve the problem. So now if I try to add a different image for JLo, this one for example, and save. Artist edited successfully. Wait, that didn't work either. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let me do show. Oh boy, I'm repeating myself here. Mm -hmm. So browse. Let me see. Save. Okay, so there was an image that was sent and it's acceptable. So why didn't things change? Let's go to the actual table for artists. Uh, Jennifer Lopez. Yeah, so it actually saved. So the only problem is, ah, so it did save. Okay, great, so it does work. So let me redirect here, no problem. Cool. Let me click add JLo back. Okay, there we go. Now we need to be able to delete the old image. So not just to delete, uh, otherwise we'll have problems. So what we'll do is if an image was added, we know an image was added by this position here, uh, even right here actually. So after we move the old file, Let's ask ourselves if the old one exists. So I'm going to copy that row right here and say if file exists row image like that, then unlink it. 
row image. Okay, that's how you delete an old file. We're going to need this as well in the delete part. So once we delete, we are here. Let's do that. Delete image. If fire exists, roll image and link it and then delete. Okay, or we can try and do this after deleting from the DB. It doesn't matter. Like so. All right, pretty cool. Okay, so we can confirm this by going to public uploads folder and checking this JLO there, the JLO file. So let's make sure that we can delete it once we delete JLO. JLO is gone. Is the file still there? Let me close it. Nope, it's no longer there. Okay, cool. So that's how you delete and edit stuff. Okay, so that's good for our artists. Everything works. We can delete, we can edit, we can add new. Now we go to music. So let's move things over to the music side here. So if I click music, there's no file. It's going to cause problems. So let's select everything from artist.php, create a new file. In the admin section, paste, save this as music.php. Okay, so now that I have that file, if I refresh, I'll have this. But let's, uh, let's change this from image. It's not artist, it's... Let's put title here. So title, image, audio. Okay, there we go. So we have title here. I'm going to also we will change everything from artist to music because that's the oh it's songs actually. So every reference to artists. Oh, this is a problem. I should have changed it to songs. Let me rename the file to songs instead of music. So let's rename this to songs to match the table so let's go back to admin again admin here instead of music let's change this to songs makes more sense and so in the link as well admin header uh, music let's change that to songs even there the link to songs. I think it's a much better system. So back users and click songs and there we go. Okay, so songs in here, let's replace every reference of artists, control D, change it to songs. Okay. Um, capital artists, let's change that to song. Here it's song name. Let me put a space there. Now oh, wait. Wherever it has song name here, let me select. Oh, okay. Instead of song name, it should be song title. Uh -huh. Even here, song title. Let me go to the table and make sure. Uh, wait, there's no title here. What the? <laughs> this is insane. Uh, we should have title here somewhere. So let's add a title column. Let's add it after the ID. So go and let's add title, right? Variable character, 100 characters and save. Okay, so we will search by title 
Uh, let me save that. Also, the songs, we need a slug for the song. So let me go. Slug is like the URL friendly version of the song title. This is good for SEO, search engine optimization. When somebody is searching for the song, it's better if the title is in the link as well. So let's put Vaca and put 100 there and save. So Slug needs an index. Let's add an index because we'll be using that to read uh, the files sometimes. Okay, great, great, great. So with all of this in mind, a Slug will be generated automatically. So that's good. Uh, yes. So I think we are good here. It's just select all from songs, add new, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's great. So back here, if I now select, we have songs, title, image, audio, and then action. So let's click add new to add a new song. So add new song, the song title, uh, there's the file here. So let's go up there and see what we have. Since file is already for images, let me just add a... Um, what did I want to add here? Let me add a label and call this one uh, image, like this. Okay, so we have image there. And then let's duplicate this. Audio file. Okay, so this one is named image, this one will be named file. Okay, and refresh. There we go. So image, audio file. So instead what I'll do is I'll put this inside a div. And then push this down. Put a class, so these classes here should be here. Let me see how that works. Okay, that's much better. Uh, let me do the same thing. Maybe instead of a label, I should put a div. Let me see how well that, yeah, maybe something like that. So I should have done this for the other one as well. But like I said, you can style these things as you wish. Uh, this is not a styling tutorial, so things don't have to look pretty. And there we go. Uh -huh. So yeah, maybe I should maintain this here as well, in the classes. It kind of looks good. Okay. So an image file and an audio file here. And what else? Uh, so we have a title, title, uh, image. So we should select an artist that this, this belongs to and a category. Okay, views will have a default of zero. Mm -hmm. Slag. Okay, so we have a um, categories that has a disabled, is it disabled thingy? No, wait, we have the users, which has this select option here, which I want to exploit. So I'll copy this select, uh, which has row, copy that from users and go to songs right about here. Let me paste that. Okay, so we also need these errors for, uh, let's say this one. Okay, so this is for the image, image error. Let me put another error here for uh, 
let me tab this in this one is for file okay mm -hmm. getting closer and what else do we have here form control select this one instead of row this one is let's see here this one is category id like that so select category okay so we're going to load the categories here for now i'll leave it as it is so there's a category and then there's artist as well so i'm going to duplicate this and then this is artist id so select all the category id and just do artist underscore id okay great so back here let's see what we have there we go so select a category uh, this one is artist so select artist all right so that's what we have song title select a category select the artist select an image select an audio file okay so cool now we need to make sure that all these are received well the first thing we need to do is read uh, all the categories that are available and all the artists that are available and add them to this list so to do that is quite simple right here Let's do it right there in place. So I'm going to put some PHP tags. Then I'm just going to say categories DB query. And then let's run a query. The query is going to be select. Uh, I just, yeah, I can get all columns. Let's uh, select all from categories and that's it really just select all from categories then we can say order by category the name of the category itself ascending order okay then let's put that query here and that's it so copy now we can remove one option here. Oops. And then put an if statement and say if not empty categories like that. Let's close that if statement with end if. Duplicate, duplicate, push this in and then change the if statement to a for each loop so for each categories as cat like that so let's copy that cat and here is category id that's fine but then we are looking at a the value here so this is going to be cat uh, id because we are looking at the id of the category and that's the value here as well so the value is cat id okay and then in here we're going to display also the category itself what have i done um, category like that close that and close that okay mm -hmm. this should do the trick so let's check it out refresh click now we have all the categories here same with artists let's do exactly the same thing so i'm just going to grab this we're on artists Ugh, what have i done okay there we go so select all from artists so let me change this and say artists 
order by uh, name ascending order, right? So there's ascending order name there. So let me copy all of this here, copy and paste here. Select artist, paste. And this one is, I'll leave this as cat, no problem, that's okay. Um, here is just a name. And that's it, the rest remains the same. So let's refresh and now we have our artists here. When we select here, we are selecting their ID. Okay, cool. The image thing works just fine. It's just the audio file that isn't there yet. Okay, and we can just duplicate what we're doing with the image to make something for our audio file. But uh, category, we need to validate these as well. Category is required, artist is required as well. So if we hit save right now, let's go up, up, up to the add section as usual, and we just need it to be required. So I'm going to copy this part, the if statement up to here, paste. So if empty uh, category ID like that, then we say a category is required Let's duplicate this and do the same for artist ID. An artist is required. Okay, that's good. Then we check for the image as well. Um, image is required in this case, an image is required. Okay, that's cool. Uh, yeah, so let's test this. If I try to click save, it's what I get. An image is required, a category is required, artist is required. So at the top here, we should have song title or uh, title instead. Wait a minute. It's not name, it's title. So add whatever things you want here for to be included in the title. Um, maybe you want the art symbol, I don't know. You can do slash art, slash hash, whatever uh, acceptable values you have in there, but don't go too crazy because some of these can cause problems. Okay, uh, what else do we need? Mm, title, title. And let's go down here again in the add for the error. It's not name here, it's title. So title, like that. Okay, so a title is required. Let me put a title. It still says a title is required, why? Um, what's going on? Uh, value. Oh, it doesn't have a name. How come? This is weird. Name, title. Huh. This is on the ad, right? Where did things go? Let's see in the artist department. Artists. This does have a name. That's weird. Yeah, this one does not crazy. Okay, let's do that. Okay, that saves things and the country. Okay, good. An artist is required. What about an image? Hmm. Let's go up and see what we're doing. Mm, image is required as well. Let's see, category. 
Okay, so I'm going to go down here and make sure that I can receive the image required error as well. So there it is. And then the file required error. Okay. Cool. Everything there looks okay. So I think at the top here is where we have an issue. Uh, an image is required. Also, we need the encoding type uh, multi-part data. It's actually there. So this is all good. Then let's duplicate this image part. It's exactly the same for when we are dealing with the audio file. So I'll change this image to file, select all instances of image here and change that to file. So that's audio file. And let's check what the acceptable ones are. So here I'm just going to tell it to show me what's inside that and then die. Okay. So let me save. Let's browse for an audio file. Even this, let's save. Okay, so none of that is working at all. Oh, my bad. It seems I was dealing with the edit section instead of the... Okay, so let me cut this from here instead of the add section here. So I duplicated the wrong place. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is I'll try and do this so I see what files are being sent. Also, I'll duplicate this here. Okay, so change that from image to file. Okay, change this to say audio file. Uh, everything remains the same. It's just that um, I want to see what format the audio file is. So let me do this. Let's uh, go to songs, add new. Let me browse the audio file and I want to see, let me see if I can get an audio file from here and let's save. Okay, so we have an image here that's empty and we have a file here. So it's audio MPEG, that's the file type. So now that I know that, I can close this and put audio MPEG here. That's all that's required here and remove that. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. So no valid should change to not valid. All right, so let me make sure I'm on the add section. So this is for the image. This is for the audio file. And, um, oh wait. I edited the wrong place again. Oh my God. So that was supposed to be just like that, not valid. And this is the one I should have edited right here. Okay not valid okay an audio file is required okay cool now when saving here and uh, not just image we need to put file comma and let's do the same here let's put file comma okay and um, let me duplicate this and put file as well now there are two destinations here. So there's this first destination. So destination image. Let me do that here as well. Underscore image like that. And then destination file. Like that. Okay. So here we can put uh, image at the end, 
and file here at the end. Uh -huh. Okay, this is uh, cool. And then we can save. All right, so it seems we have everything we need. So let me try this out. Let me refresh, resend. So it's saying an artist is required, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't show any of the other errors like image and so on. I guess the problem is here, this is changed to name for some reason. So uh, where is errors? Errors for image. This one should be image like that. And also this one should be file. Okay, an error there, an error there. All right, that should do. Let me try again. Okay, an image is required, an audio file is required, an image is required. Why do I have a last one at the end here? So let's go down to the add section. I have an error thingy here. Uh, there's an error for file and an error for image again. So let's remove that, that's not required. Let's save, okay. All right, so things are looking up. So let's try a song, um, one song I have here. So I'll select an artist, Diamond. I'll select a, ca um, a category for dance. This one is one in a million. That's the song title. And let's grab an image First, before I do that, let me grab an audio file. That's the audio file. Let's grab an image. Let me go to the desktop, include. I'll put any image here, actually. Just an image will do. And then let me hit save. Okay, so undefined array key name on line 92. So let's go to line 92 and see it's complaining about name is not a thing okay that's true this one should be title so let me select all this name and change it to title okay so title image file user id i, I got that oh we should add more of this we should add the category and artist id why didn't uh, I do that so comma category ID artist ID okay cool now if I go here there's more to add there's a date there's views and they slug okay where is date here so when I was adding users, where is this users? I was adding a date as well. So let me just copy this and paste it there. Okay, so we have a date. Okay, and views, we can also set that to zero. So duplicate that and say views, maybe in case you want to start not at zero, another number, but there we go. Uh -huh. So let me copy this from user ID up to there and paste here. Only thing I need to do is put the full columns on these guys. Okay. And then date and then views. All right. So let me make sure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, where are the others? It's title, image, file, user ID, category. Oh, okay. So let me duplicate these two. That's category ID and artist ID. 
All right, good. So everything seems uh, cool at this point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Except for the slug. So let's add a slug here. Now for the slug, I'm going to create a function that converts the title into a slug. So here I'm going to say, I'm going to call the function string to URL and then put the title in there. Okay, so we'll create this function in the functions page. So let's click on the functions page. Where we go and go to the end here. And now the code for this is, uh, what it's simply doing is, let's see, function string to URL. Then let's get that string. Okay, so I already created this function in, an, in a previous um, project. So I'm just going to copy from there and paste the code here. So let me change this to URL. Let me just call it URL because that's what I called it in the other function. And I'm going to paste right here. So this is the code. So you can go through the code and, but what it really is, is for example, this part here is removing any single quotes from the URL string. Um, the rest of this is just cleaning up any unwanted um, characters and just leaving the normal text characters that we are familiar with that can be used in a URL. And um, yeah, that's all we're doing and removing some final um, extra characters here as well, converting it to lower string, uh, lower case, etc., etc., and removing the, the the dash or the hyphen at the end and the beginning of the text. So this is all it's doing, just cleaning up the text until we see only letters like A to Z and some numbers, and then converting some spaces into a dash like this one's etc etc so that's all it's doing so just copy as it is hopefully you can see it clearly here i've zoomed in enough pause the video and type that all right so once we are done with that that's to create our slag uh wait is it string to url oh yes it is okay okay good so let's add slag at the end so comma slug and that's what we're gonna do here as well. Slug, don't forget the full colon. Okay, with all that, this should work. So back here and let's refresh, resend. Mm -hmm. So artist created successfully, that's nice. Um, name is undefined, so that's fine. Let's go down to where the table is and So there's no name, there's title instead. So title. Okay. Now we can add more here. Um, there's an audio file, but let me duplicate this. There's category. And then there's artist. Okay. Artist, category, audio, that's fine. So let me duplicate this. We have image here, right? But if I duplicate and move it after, then I can add category, category ID, and then artist ID. Okay. Mm. Then we need the audio file as well. So I'll duplicate this file, move it here. Now, instead of an image here, we'll put an audio, um, audio tag and put controls like this. And put the source. 
the type is audio slash mpeg the source is going to be this but file instead okay let me remove that uh -huh. all right this looks about right so let me refresh is the image category artist and the audio file so if i try to play this let me lower the volume so it plays just fine uh only thing is artist and category are showing an id so instead we need a way to get their names so we can create functions real quick i'll just say function get category so we get the category by id right so we supply an id and get its name instead so here we're going to say role is equal to db query query one and let's run a query right obviously we'll need to supply an id so we'll say id and then whatever id was given there like so and then what i'll say is if not empty row uh, category then return the same row category like this otherwise return the word unknown All right but let's make the query that is required we'll say select since we're only getting one column which is category so we we'll just say select category from categories where id is equal to id limit one all right so that function gets our category that we want let's do one for artist as well so get let me that one is title right but get artists so select title from ah, actually it's name the artist is name so select name from artists where id is equal to id and then replace name etc so this will mean if i go to my table now if i go to songs and right here uh, instead of all this i'll just say get category like that put that id in there and then here get artist and put that id in there that's it so if i now refresh this is what i get so category artist mm -hmm. all right so i can try and add another song so let me add a different song uh, the song title here mud over me category dance uh, artist diamond image mm, i don't know what what images to get even here mud over me where is the okay so great and let's uh, save and there it goes so now we have two songs here, this one. All right, so this is playing, that's playing, we are good to go. Okay, so now we go to the edit and delete of these songs here. Now, uh, this should be easy, so let's try that. Edit and delete, if I click edit, this is what I get, uh, delete, that's what I get, okay, so back. 
So let's go ahead and start with uh, delete view. So there's edit and there's delete. So there's no need for uh, name here is not a thing. So let's change name to title for the song. And simply by doing that, uh, we are good. So if I click delete, delete song, mad over me, back. Okay, great. Uh, what else? Mm, let's go to when we click delete itself, what happens at the top here? And this is the section. So delete from songs where ID is equal to ID. Uh, select from songs, delete from songs, limit one. If So here we delete two things, the image and uh, the song, the audio. Okay, so if they exist, delete them. Uh -huh. Okay, which is the same here, delete old file in the edit section. So let's duplicate that. This one is delete old image. Oh, sorry, this one should still be fire exists. Okay. But this should go into the other one. So cut this. Actually, the image is here. So my mistake here, this one should be file. All right, not valid. Okay, so the delete will work just fine, but the edit might not. So let's check it out. Instead of name, there is title. Song has a title. Okay, a title is required. Uh, letters and spaces. So you can go through all these error messages just to make sure they are correct. So here we have the image, everything still fine, then the audio file. Mm. Then here we change this to audio MPEG. Okay. What else do we need? File name, destination, file, not valid. Okay. So it seems about right, only when saving. Let me grab all these guys here because we need extra. Also, when validating, we need category and artist ID. So I'm going to copy these guys from here. In fact, I'll copy the title up to here, this validation. So copy, make sure we're in the edit section because it's easy to get lost here. Let me paste, okay. Mm -hmm. Then let's grab the saving uh, component, which is right here. Copy. This is not artist, this should be song. So let me select all repetitions of... Hmm. Okay, let me just grab this. Okay, great. So on the edit section, I want to paste this. Oh, don't override the ID, paste. Okay. So we have everything we need. Then it says update songs, set name. Name is not a thing anymore. So this changes to title. There's user ID. Let me duplicate this. So user ID, there's category ID, and then there's artist ID. Okay, user ID is repeating itself. What else is there? File, no, no, no. 
Uh, let's see. Auto repeat. This is an editing one, so we don't need to repeat the views. We don't need to create a new slug. Um, Mm -hmm. The rest are debatable. So here we have one, two, oh, the date we don't need either. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, a few are missing here. Category and artist ID are there title is there there's image and file that are missing user id is it user id is there okay so this one is okay up to here all right uh -huh. now there's an issue here because there are two optional things. There's an image and there's a file. These are optional. So we have to make sure that anything optional is added in later. So what I would do is I'll remove this where clause here. Cut it out. Put a space, maybe. I'll cut it out. So this becomes the base query, OK? And then, if for some reason uh, destination, let me change these. Destination image is set, then we're going to include that here. So I'm going to put a comma. Let me duplicate this. We'll add this where clause at the very end, like so. And then we'll put a dot equal to, to tell it to simply add and not replace. So same here, I'll put a dot equals and I'll say something like comma image is equal to image like that. Okay, so that we add the image. And then let's duplicate this as well. And this is file, so let me replace all these instances of image with file and then file is equal to file we are simply adding to the query that already exists and then we put where id is equal to id and then we can save okay so here file and image will only be added from here so we need to remove them here okay so here we have one two three four five and then one, two, three, four, and five here. Okay, seems like it's gonna work. Then I just need to change this audio part into destination file. Same thing here, destination image. Okie dokie. I think we are done with all of this now. So let me try and edit. Let me just edit this song click what's happening let's go to the edit view let's see what we have wrong so edit view is here what I need to do is just copy the um, the add view so I'll just copy the add new song here well let me just copy the inputs up to before the save button so copy so I'm going to replace everything in here up to before, up to here, uh, before the save button. So right there, paste. Okay, cool. Uh -huh. Only thing is I need these guys to have a default value. So here I'll do row category ID like that let me copy this and where is the artist select artist is right here let me put that there artist id 
Oh, why is this category ID? Artist ID. Mm hmm. That's name. Okay, that's okay. Mm, category name, and then artist ID. Mm, what else? Mm -hmm. Okay, that does it. Let me go up here. I think that should be a mistake. Select artist, and here it's select category. So this one should be artist ID. All right. Let's refresh. Oopsie daisy. I've done something wrong. Something I missed. So let me undo. Uh, it's the image I deleted. So I'm going to redo all of this. It's just that I need this image tag here to still be there. So I'll copy and redo everything. And so right within the select image, this one right here, in here I will put that right above that, like so, row image. Mm -hmm. So refresh. Uh oh, what's happening? Oh, this is on the add, right? I did something wrong. So on the edits, that's where I need to put this. I'm looking for the um, image file right before the file input. I'll do that and refresh. Okay, cool. Great. So, but the audio file, maybe the file name is important to view. So here what I'll do is I'll put a div and then I'll echo out row file that way you can see the file name before replacing it okay so that's all right so those are the edits but we don't have we have this we have that what's with the title so let me make sure i have the title where is title right there row title okay that should do it refresh there we go so back edit this one one in a million mm -hmm. back okay so everything seems fine in the title the validation if you want to put a dot um, to validate the title for example you also have to escape it slash dot because a dot is a special character in uh, reg um, regular expressions so you have to put a slash and a dot there okay so with all this in mind everything seems cool let's add a few more songs and then we can we need to go to the um, to the other side let me try this mud over me let me put Maybe we can put numbers as well in here. So if you want numbers in the title, uh, you can put zero to nine like that. This will mean numbers are included in song uh, title. So zero to nine. So let me try and put number two there and save. Okay, so it has updated without destroying the files. Okay, they're still there, so let's edit. But let's say I want to edit the file. I want a different uh, audio file. Just change the audio file. Let's see if the audio file has changed. Yeah, it has. Let me edit this. Let's try and change just the image itself and see if everything else stays the same. So let me add... Um, this one, Shakira, save. Let's see if the music's still there. Okay, so things are working as intended. Let's just uh, display this music on the 
other side which is the website side so all we need is to let's go to the website so right here I want us to loop through and display only the songs that we have the songs that we have so far which will be the same as on the music page here so let's go to the home page quickly here where is this home.php so there's a music card we don't need all the extra music cards so let's delete them so in the whole thing i just need one card like this so save back home i have one card there that's fine and all i need to do now is read from the database okay let's remove that so rows is equal to db query oopsie daisy now you can put your query directly in here if you want select all from users where no we just want all of them just order by id descending and limit uh i don't know maybe 16 i don't know how many you want to limit here that's fine so once we read that you can just come here and check if things went well so php will say if not empty rows and then close that let's put an end if here php and if close that okay let's push everything in duplicate that duplicate this push everything in again change the if to a for each and now we have a loop so rows as single row okay so with this in mind we can copy this mm. now since we're going to be showing this music card in a lot of places uh, it's going to be a problem if we just copy this code and put it everywhere we want uh, because if we decide to change how the overall music card looks we'll have to change it in all those places that it's available so the best way to do this is just to cut this out and then put uh, require no oh, i need php tags right i'll say or oh, include you can use include or require doesn't matter let's grab a page and we're going to call this page song like that and then close it so in pages right click new file maybe we can put this inside includes since it's an included it's not a full page so new paste the card so this is just a single card here save this we'll save it as song.php all right so in the home we'll put includes slash song okay so if i refresh this is what we get so we have two songs there which is cool but let me go to song itself so instead of this we'll be expecting a raw here so we're going to echo raw variable like this with title now sometimes titles can have strange characters so let's create a function called escape to escape things for us so i'll copy this and i'll paste here and this one will be uh, artist id but then we'll just use the get get artist function okay let's put the whole thing in a bracket again so two brackets here two brackets so the result of that artist name we escape it even though artist name are unlikely to cause any problems but better safe than sorry and then copy this and put this here and this one will be the image right there we go and that's about it 
and then we'll need a link to take us to the full page of this so i'm going to put root like that slash and then it will be song like this or it will be music i don't know what we'll call it um the whole page maybe it will be song and then slash the slug of the song so let me copy this and paste it there let's put the slug there that would be the link to the actual song so refresh okay so we have a couple of problems uh, the function escape does not exist so fine let's go to the functions page and create it so functions anywhere here we just say function escape so escape will be given a string and they need to return that same string but it's going to add a function called HTML special chars to it okay that's the built-in PHP function that cleans up uh, code for pasting on the browser okay some of it worked some did not music let me see these errors by going to view page source uh, so where are the errors okay there we go uh, undefined array key slug okay so it's telling me that slug is undefined but it's right here right let me refresh here to see what i have okay so with all this a slug was created here which is nice and you can see if you look at the slug it's just the title but uh, a url version of it so let's go back to song it's telling me that slug is unknown how come mm. hmm? this is weird uh, it's saying undefined array key slug on line four in song this is right there huh row title row artist id all these are fine but not this one hmm let me put id there let's see what we get yeah it's not helping let's go back to the home page where are we reading from oh we're reading from users sorry from songs okay there we go finally Mm -hmm. so you hover on one of these you see that uh, the link to it has um, the title of the song in there which is nice uh, nice link to look at in google okay great so what we need now is a main page that when you click it takes you to the actual song now keep in mind if i add a new song if i go to admin and go to songs add a new song uh, let me browse for a song maybe let's start with an image i will put uh, alicia keys select uh, pop maybe ed sheeran as um, the title we just call it baby browse the actual song and i'll just find any mp3 song here to save okay so once I do that, if I go back to the website, you see it here now. All right? Yes. So now we just need a way. Even the music page will be exactly like this. So let's create the music page. The music page is essentially just the home page. So let me copy this. There's a slight difference that it doesn't have that. Uh... Let me right click pages, new page, paste. So everything remains the same just that uh, this is the music.php page the limit here should be maybe 24 and uh, here I'll just say music and just remove this hero part that's it 
Now for the sake of SEO, let me refresh here and go to music and this is what I get, okay? The problem is the title doesn't change regardless what page I'm on. So we can go to the header and change that. So header, remember that in the, if I echo the URL, first item in URL, that item is always the page name. And let me do UC first like this so that it capitalizes the first letter. Okay, so now that when I refresh, I get the word music and then music website. If I click here, I get home and then home website. So the title is dynamic now to follow the current page. Okay, great, home page. All right, good. So things are looking good. We go to the music, uh, there we go. And you may want to order these by the view count. So we will do that shortly, but let's create an overall uh, page for when we click, let's say I click on this one, it should show that page song. So that page will be called song. And what I can do is copy the music page, right click on pages, paste, save to be song.php. So this one will read just one song, right? So we'll put title here as song. And then here we'll say select. Now what I want to do is grab the slug. So I'm going to say slug is equal to, I will look for in the URL, uh, the first item. So the first item is zero and then one. So this is zero song, which is the page. And then one is baby, which is the uh, slug for the, for the current song. So it's possible it may not exist. So let's put no like that. And then let's create a query like this. So I'm just going to move this query over into there. So since here we are retrieving just one song, so we'll say limit one. And then there's no need to order anything since it's just one song. We can just say where ID. No, nope, we're looking for the slug. We say slug is equal to slug. And of course we'll add the query here, but then we need to provide the slug. And we're going to do that and put that variable slug in there. So instead of rows, it's going to just be row. So if row not empty, there's no need to loop through this. It's just one row that we are getting. And so this one will be one like that. And then include song uh, foo. That's what we'll call this one. So I'm going to copy the single song card here, copy everything, create a new page, paste, save this one as a song dash foo. Okay, save. All right, goody. Now instead of music card here, I'm just going to remove this. Mm -hmm. Because I need to redesign this one. So you can put full on all of these if you want, that will be fine. So now if I refresh, I do get something, but it's saying uh, failed to open stream, no such file. What file is it? Song foo.php inside pages. Hmm, how come? Song dash foo. Wait a minute, why? Song foo.php failed opening. Oh, it's looking for it in the includes, right? So that's where the problem is. So let's go back to song. It's not supposed to be in includes, it's supposed to be just in the main, the main folder. Okay, so this is what we get. Okay, the artist. Let me edit that song full thingy. Uh, where is it? Let me close some of these pages I'm not using. So song foo is there. 
Mm, what I need from here. I forgot to add a bio for the artist and all that, so bear with me there. Mm -hmm. Wait, what am I trying to do? Okay, this one, I need this to be centered. Okay, and that's where I need the song title to be actually. Mm, so I'm just going to grab, what's going on here? Uh, Yeah, we'll say now playing. Then let's go to the song full and instead of having a title over here, I'll move this up here like that. Uh -huh. And maybe change this to an H h2 tag let's see okay so that's the song title now if i go to more music and click on this one for example this is what i get now playing so i can add a style here i'm lazy to add classes there i'll tell it max width maybe 800 pixels Okay, so there we go, much, much better. And then we'll have the artist name here, maybe. Uh, and then we'll put by. Okay, not over me by diamond. And then we'll put the song after the image down here. So to put the song is easy. We've done this before in uh, the admin section where we had songs. Where was that uh, songs? At the very bottom there, we had an audio tag. So just easier to just copy it. Let's just copy that audio tag, put it on song foo. That's after image inside this card content paste like so and yeah, let's move things over a little bit better yeah, very nice so refresh and there it is now I can add a style to this as well and just make width 100% now I must mention I do have a tutorial for making a an audio player you can check it out um, on my uh, channel. So in this case, the song will play here. Okay, so go to music, click on this one. It's a different song. This one will play as well. Okay, great. This one too will play. All right. So things are happening, everything cool. The only thing now is we need to search by, if I click on category, I want it to bring only those results uh, by category. So, yep, otherwise this is all good. Now the way you can add featured music so that it doesn't add the same uh, music here is one way. Oh. By the way, um, we need to update views. If I click on a song, its views must be updated to show that it's being viewed a bit more. So what I can do, song foo here, uh, right after this here, I can add a view count. So you can put an icon here if you want, but let me just add a div and say views. And then, of course, I will echo the row views over here. 
Now, if you want somebody to only view the views when they're logged in, you can put that is logged in or an if statement is logged in or is admin, depending on what you want. So let me refresh. You see that views is zero. Uh, we can also add a date for creation. I don't know if we added this. Date added. And then we can use get date. And then put our date there, like so. I don't know if we have a date on this column at all. Yeah, there it is. Date added, views. Yep. Very cool. Now, in order to update the views, right when this page is loaded, this is when a view counts. So if you don't want the logged in user to count as a view or the owner of the page, then you can put some if statements, etc., etc., to check if the ID of the song is the same as the ID of the currently logged in user. To get any column of the currently logged in user, you just say user and then you name that column. Maybe the ID, maybe the email, etc., etc. And to get the ID of the current song is inside row. So here what I want is to update, I'll say db query, and I'll put a query here and I'll say update songs, and then set set views is equal to views plus one, where the ID is equal to ID limit one. Okay, so we just run that query but the ID we're looking for is the one in this row. So I'm going to put a comma and put that, create that array, and then put the ID from the row. So I'll put ID like so. Just that will update the view count. So if I refresh, it won't look updated, but if I refresh again, you see now there's one view and there's two views, three views etc etc so then later on you can go to the music side here and update them by view right so on the music side here on the music page where is that here we can order instead of by the id we can order by the views in descending order which is the most viewed should come first so if for example i decide to view this one the most I'll refresh it a couple of times, come to music, you see it goes to the first uh, spot. Okay, so that's how these are going to be. So you can put one latest where you order by the ID, which will mean the latest will be the first. Then you can put one that's most viewed category, and then you can order by the number of views. It just it depends on what you want. And then if you want featured here, uh, you can add an extra column called featured where you put one or zero. And then if you put one on that column, it's part of the featured list. Then you can read um, from the home page. You can say load all those. And then you put a where clause and say where featured is equal to one. For example, in this case, if I add a column called featured in here, uh, let's go to the songs. I can add an extra column and say featured, then make it tiny int, put one length. The default value is zero. Song doesn't start featured from the beginning. Then we can put an index because we'll use this to read. So I can say here, for example, I say um, where featured is equal to one order by ID, limit 16, okay? So since I've added featured is equal to one, there's no variables here, so no need to add an array. It's just where featured is equal to one. So, so far, nothing fits that category, so there will be no songs here. So at this point, we can say, we can put an else statement here, like saying, and then we can put a div and say, no songs found. Okay, let's put some classes and let's put M2 for margin. So here you see 
no songs found okay but if we go to our um, we browse here and edit some of these and add featured to be equal to one maybe two of these songs so we have two featured songs if i refresh they'll be here so that's how you can add them and then when you click on the edit to edit the song you can have somewhere where you edit the featured part and set it to one or zero or yes or no depending on what you want okay so that's how things work there artists will exactly be the same like the music page so let's copy the music page everything here copy uh, right click on pages and paste save this as artists.php okay so artists.php select all from artists okay and then here we'll say order by maybe views descending that's entirely up to you and instead of includes song we're going to have includes artist like that so in the includes we have this song card let's copy that right click includes paste let's save this one as artist.php okay so artist doesn't have a slug artist has an id so i'll put id there but you can put a slug for artist as well if you want it doesn't have a title uh, the artist has a name and uh, that's all they need maybe a bio let's put bio here there's no need to get artist let's just do that and get the bio mm -hmm. uh, that's cool so let's refresh here okay so we have an error in the order close mm. let's see it in the artist so it says order by views okay views does not exist in the column of artists so let's use id okay so these are the artists we want so let me change uh where is this artist at php the name i want this to be uc words to capitalize every word for those that have small letters at the beginning okay so there we go these are the artists mm -hmm. now if you want to create a full artist page same thing we did with um instead of song this should lead to artist like that and the same way we created the song foo we can copy all of this in the same pages new paste save we can create a artist foo okay and then change a few things mm -hmm. so wait artist foo uh song is there artist here there's a song which loads this hmm i don't know why i added the song foo or artist foo anyway it doesn't matter you can include as many pages within as many pages as you want so let me paste this one it's not now playing is this one is artist profile that's what it should be called and let's save it's artist.php so here we are selecting from artists where id is equal to id so we're not using a slug anymore it's id and this one will be id and uh, artist foo great so let's try this out okay so there we go artist profile now we don't need an audio thingy here so let's see here we have title let's go to artist foo page where is that so we change things like for example title is the artist name and 
what else? Here we don't have a view count for the artists, but you can add a view count for the artist so you know which artist is more popular as well. So just do the same thing as in the in the song there. Mm -hmm. We don't need this one uh, sub item there. We need the image. We don't need the file. We don't have an audio thingy. We don't have a view counter for this. Maybe we have a date for the artists. I don't know. Yeah, we don't have a date column as well. So out. What else don't we have? Slag is not a thing. So we don't even need to have a link here because we're already on the page itself. So out, out. Boom. Artist profile. And then what we need here is the bio. So row bio, close that. Okay, so the bio is empty for now. That's the artist profile right there. Now, if you want on the artist profile, you can put songs down here, which they have done just to improve things. So there's a bio down here, but we can put songs as well. So what I can do is I can put a div and say songs. And say artist songs. And then what we can do is the same way we load songs on the songs.php page. Where is that? Mm. Uh, let me click here. Songs. Where is this music? Oh, it's called music. The same way we loaded the songs here, we can do the same thing. Just copy that and come to artist. Where is artist full? There we go. We can paste here like this. So we know that this artist has an ID of a certain kind. So we say select all from songs where we say where artist ID is equal to the artist ID. We order by ID by views descending, which we show the most popular. Then you can limit how many songs to show, maybe 20, like that, okay? And uh, that should do well. Instead of rows, actually we can, uh, we can change this to songs. And then this one, we, we still need this as row because that's what this accepts, hmm. unfortunately. Okay, so I'll leave, I'll leave it like that. And um, yeah, this should do actually, but we need to supply this artist ID. So let me do this. Let me put query here. And then move all of these into query like that, okay. Then put the query here. But I need to put that artist ID. And where do we get it? We get it from the current row of the user. And that's the artist ID. Let me move that there. Okay, so this should show the songs of this user. Artist ID undefined, okay. No, wait. Oh, so it's not artist ID, it's ID, since this is the artist row there. All right. So this one has no songs, really? Let's go to uh, artists. Uh, it's Diamond that has more songs. Okay, so here are his songs right there. So what I can do um, is to give this a div that will have display flex on it. Let's move things over. Let's add a style, display flex, and then add flex wrap as well, and say wrap. That should solve the problem of this. 
Okay, so there we go. You can also justify content center. And that should move us to the center. Right, so artist songs are here. Here there'll be a bio if there's any. So if bio is empty, if it's not empty, we're going to see something there. And it's a good idea to escape the bio. So let's escape there. Okay, like that. Cool. So there will be a bio here and then artist songs at the end. So when we go to the edit, I'll add the bio editor so that we can add something in the bio and see how that will look like. Now to add a new page here, you just look at the link like this is about. So you add a page about.php. That's it. Contact us, same thing. So that way we have pages that are active for everything. So let me show you uh, exact example if you want to make the contact us page. The link to the contact us page is contact. So if I click on new file and just type contact us here on this number. And then I save this as contact.php, save. Uh, this should suffice. So if I click on contact, at least now we have contact us on this number like that, okay? But in order to make it look like the other pages, you need to add the header and the footer. So we'll put the header and the footer. Make sure to change that to footer. Then it looks like the other pages if I refresh, okay? And then you can do whatever you want. Design it in any way that you want. Uh, put some divs uh, like that. Put some classes there. Uh, maybe M2, like that, whatever. So do your thing. And then that's how you create pages. As simple as that. Okay, cool. And uh, what else here? Um, let's see if we can add a bio thingy and call it a day. Let me also add this link to the profile uh, link here. So actually, before I do that, uh, before I forget the full song here, we should also add a download button. If you want to add a download button, that is. So here we can put a button like that and just say download. And then let's put but, uh, a class of button and BG, I like purple. Okay, so download. Now download will just be a link to some other page. So this page will be called root and then slash download and then slash. Now a song has a slug. So we'll use that slug for the download so that it's part of uh, uh, SEO, search engine optimization. Let's put that slug in there and close. And then let's move this A tag down here like that and then tab these guys over. Okay, so now we have a download button. If I click on a song, let's go to music, uh, click on this one. I should have a download button. Now if I click on the button, it shows me uh, page not found, but let's create the page. So let's go to page, new file, and let's put some PHP tags. Now there's code that I need to paste here. So I'll just paste it there. So let's save that. Download.php, great. So what we are simply doing is, I've used this code in a different project. So that's why I just copied and pasted it. We are editing the headers to tell the browser what we want to do. Just like we edit the header when we want to redirect a page or when we want to set the data type. So just copy what's here and we'll be good to go. So all we need is raw and to get that file and we are good to go. So here there should be a slug uh, on the download button here. One in a million here is the slug. So it's on the first row. So I'm just going to say slug, check in the URL. 
number one. If it's not there, just set it to null. Okay, then let's try to find this row. So say db query. Let's put one there. And let's put a query. Now I know I'm going to use the slug in there. So let me just do that and put that variable slug like that. But I need a query, of course. Otherwise, I'll get undefined variable. So say select all from from songs where slug is equal to slug limit one. All right, so we run that. We've supplied the slug. Now, if row is found, let's say if row because I don't want to try and uh, retrieve an empty song. Oops. And then if we get to this point, I'm just going to echo. Song not found. Okay, great. So if the row is here, now I usually use uh, objects, so that's why I have these arrows here, but let's change these arrows to, oopsie daisy, to this kind of thing, to an array, yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, cool. So all this does is tell the browser that we are about to download a file and then read file actually reads the file and downloads it. If nothing happens, then song not found. Okay, so let's try this out. Let me get back here. Now, if I refresh and click, I get a download thing here. So it's done downloading and that's the song right there. Okay, great. As easy as that. So we're able to download. Let's let's try and uh, make a link to the profile. I have a profile here. So what I'll do is in the header, uh, where is this profile? So instead of linking to profile here, I'm going to link to admin and then users and then slash edit and then slash and then add uh, from the users from the user function. I want my ID. Okay, so whoever is logged in, their ID will be in there, and you can they can go to the profile, and there we go. Okay, go to website, click profile. There we go. Back. All right. Cool. Uh, yeah, this does it. So with artists, though, if I click add and edit, I need a bio somewhere. So just after the image, let me put bio here, just so I don't hear some complaints about that. Yeah, so let's go to, where is this, admin mm, artists. So in the add section here, let's try with the edit first, so we can edit something. So right at the end, or before the back, I'll have a text area here, that's what I'll do. I'll give it a name of bio and of course I need to set value just like with these guys here copy and paste it there in between and change that to bio okay so let's put some classes here as well class form control my1 but at the same time uh, is it columns or rows? I'm not even sure. Rows, I don't know, 10 rows. Let's see that. Okay, there we go. So uh, we can put a label here, bio. We can say artist bio, like this. Okay, so artist bio here. Even here where we're selecting a file, I didn't uh, 
name this as uh, artist image I think I did not let me use a div instead so it's uh, all the way through okay so artist image artist bio so it's good to have lorem ipsum so we can add just a bunch of text here without having to type but of course my internet sucks so it's gonna take a minute to get there <sighs> okie dokie meanwhile while i wait for this oh boy uh, this is an artist bio let me put some enter in there so that i show you what problems you could face copy and let me paste there and this is the end okay so with this in mind let me copy this uh, artist bio copy i'll copy it to the um, to the add section as well right here after the image paste and copy this put it here as well artist image okay so we have bio we don't have row here since we are just adding a new thing so let's remove that but when saving we have to include bio in there so bio is optional so no need to do anything fancy so oops let me just duplicate name and change that to bio don't forget to add it here as well and full colon like that okay let's do the edit as well uh, we need to grab it from there bio and update set name just after name here we can control shift d to duplicate those and then bio and bio again let's make sure that it's there also in the database on artists bio is there so now let me try to save so save let me click edit and the bio is still there good now if i go to view the artist now from here i can view the artist profile as well i can just put a link to artist profile which would be easy if i click on the image so right here in artists i can just go to here where i added the image and then put a link to it so i'll put an a tag put root because it's required slash artist slash the artist id so i'm going to use the row and put id like that and close it and then put the a tag down here like so okay so now if i refresh i can click on this to take me to the artist bio and there is the bio but it doesn't have those enter thingy thingy so what we need to do to view this let's go to artist full where is that artist full so where we are echoing the bio is here there's an escape right there so let's use that function instead uh, let's say let me go to the functions.php okay so there's html uh chars here but i want to wrap this whole thing into another function called new line to break this one right here this is a real php function so it creates a new line character uh, it converts new line characters to break tags so when you do that you can see that now okay great so we have a bio and all that let's look at other artists oh there we go so we have a problem here a little bit <laughs> these bios are too out of control 
So let's go to the small artist um, artist card. Uh, where are the artists card? So if I go to artists, where is the artists page? It's inside the includes. There is artist. So where we're showing the bio, I want to just get a bit of it. So I'll use substring like that. Now substring takes two params the string and the start. So we start at zero, but we can also have an end. Let me just tell it to get maybe, I don't know, 50 characters from the string, from the bio. So I'll just copy that, bring it here where string is and remove that. So let's see how big that is. Okay, so slight bio there, which is cool. Maybe I can add a style and say uh, font size, 11 pixels. Just make it smaller. Okay, something like that. You can design these things as you wish, you know, no problem there. Okay, so, but when I click, I get all that. Very nice. And music. Mm -hmm. And I click on this one. There's a song there. Okay, pretty cool. I think everything is working as intended, um, unless I have forgotten something. Oh, categories, yay, I forgot that. <laughs> so let me close all files here, close all files. Categories will be just like the music page. So I'll copy what music page has, and then pages, new file, paste. Save this one as Catigo. Hmm, what do we call it? Category, just singular, PHP. Okay, that's what we'll call it. Mm. I'll do category like that. Okay. Now, um, in the header, we are supposed to reference that. So let's go to the header. And where we have category here, now we need to read all the categories. We did that in when creating a new artist. Um, where is this? If we go to the admin section, when creating a new song, there's a part where we read categories, right? So I don't want to retype all that. This is a categories thingy here. So I'm just going to copy this whole thing over here. Copy and come here. And uh, wait, where am I going with this? I'm going to the header, sorry. So right in here, I will paste. Mm -hmm. So this gets all the categories, right? And then there's categories here. And then we have a loop here. So let me remove this select and that select. I'm just interested in the loop. And in this loop is going to be on the drop down list here. So I'll copy this because that's the unit and paste it there so I can copy things from one side to the other. I don't need this set select at all. I don't need this value. I just need to see the actual category. So I'll just put that here. Okay. Yep, that should do it. Then I can grab these guys and put them here, like so. Okay, so in the drop down list, that's what we have now. Very cool. Let me show you this. If I refresh, now I have that. I don't know why all these, uh, I'll probably go through it and check why these guys have. You know, I can change the nav. Uh, instead of having nav item here, let me remove that, that class. Ah, looks weird. Okay. I can say nav item, even two. I can put two there, no problem. So in the header, just let me just refresh the, the style there so that when I edit it, let me find nav item. I want to copy exactly what's here. 
to Nava item 2. Everything remains the same, only that it's a different class, so that JavaScript does not interfere with it. So if I do this, now at least I have a clean slate. All right. Now if I click, I have this. Okay. But I need a link here. I need this to link to something. So there's an A tag here. And so we'll put root, close that, slash category, slash. And then we'll just put the category name itself. That way we looking good in Google searches. Okay, like that. So now if I, uh, let me go even on the home page. If I click and hover on these, you see it changes according to the name of the category. So if I click country, I've used dance before, so click and then it comes to category, but these are not the actual results. So let's go to the category page itself and use, uh, we'll say category is equal to and uh, we'll get from the URL and that's it. area number one. If not, we'll set it to no. And let's create a query. So the query will be similar to this, but what we want is, okay, so this one is going to be slightly complex. Okay, let me show you why. Um, we have a categories here, right? So instead of being given the ID, because in the songs, if we were given the ID in the URL, it would be simple because we just look for any song with that category ID. But the problem is the songs have a category ID, but in the URL, we have the actual name of the category. Okay, so which means we have to read from the category table and then once we get the result of that, we use that as another query to read from the songs. So it's not so complex, but it's just slightly different to the others. So in here, we'll have a query within a query. Okay. So first of all, I want to select uh, a category based on the category name. So I'll say select. Now, I just want one column, the ID column of the category table because I just want the category ID. That's it. So I'll say select ID from what I'm about to do doesn't work if I put a star here or I select multiple columns. It will only work if I select one. So select ID from categories. Okay. No need to order or anything like that because I know I just want one item. So I can put limit one. That's fine. So select ID from categories, but I need to tell it where, where the category, because that's the name itself, is equal to category, like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So whatever category is supply there. And then the result of this, I'll put it in a bracket. I'll create another select query. I'll say select all from songs where category ID Okay, category ID in. Okay, so what this does is that it tells you to select whatever the result of this, select this one where the ID is in here. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so with all that, we can also limit here and say um, limit 24 limit and order by views descending All right okay so this is the same as saying like where id is equal to but then if there are many ids you use the word in and then there could be a list of ids here but even though we know it's just one but still this works okay then let me add the query here but I need to supply category, of course. So I'll say category, category. All right, let's see what we get. 
Okay, so we have a problem. Uh, yeah, so it's telling me I have an error near something, something here. Select all from blah, blah, blah. Access syntax error. PDO exception. So there's a syntax error in my query. So let's see. Select all from songs where that in. Select ID from categories where categories equal to category limit one. Mm, order by views descending limit 24. So let me reduce. Uh, maybe limit one here is not a thing. So let me remove that. Maybe that's where the problem is. Ah, that was the problem. Okay, cool. So this one is in that category that I wanted. So we are not showing the category of music here, but let's do that. Let's go to includes song, uh, where? No, includes song. So as I show the artist ID here, I can also do get category to get the category ID. That way we see two things. Category is dance. And that's dance over there, which is nice. So if I click here and say pop, there's pop there. Category country, there's nothing. So it's working, but uh, I need to reduce the font size here. Font size, 12 pixels. So you can color these things as you wish, of course. Uh, dance, there we go. So that's dance. Or you can write category if you want here. All right. That's all up to you. Okay, very good. Now we are able to read. I can also, I wanted also to add, where is this? Mm, uh, on the home page, there's this part where we have an else statement. So I'll grab this. Let me go to category. Mm -hmm. And I want to put that here as well. So that in case we don't find any songs, we'll say no songs found. If we go to the wrong category like R&B, no songs found. Dance, there we go. All right, so hopefully uh, this has shown you how to create uh, a system like this. Now let's try a search before we go. So there's a search here we can do. Just like we search for category, let's do a search page. So the search page will be exactly the same like this. So let's do that real quick. If I go to the footer, uh, where is the footer here? Mm -hmm includes footer so there's a search bar here right and there's a form so the form here we should tell it where to go so we use action and tell it to go to root and uh, we'll have a search page right like that okay and make sure the input has a name this name is find okay so that's great and also, uh, we can use another set value here if you want to maintain uh, what you searched for. I don't know. Anyway, what we'll do is let's, uh, the way category is, let's copy everything and right click on pages, new file and save this one is a search it's not category so I'll call it search dot php all right everything else remains the same so the only difference is that in here instead of category we are looking for uh, the song title right now it's not in the url this time it's in the get variable. So it's going to be inside get find like that. That's where it's going to be because this is what we named the, um, the input box in here. It's named find. 
So either that or no. And then we're going to say, um, what do we say here? Select all from songs where, uh, here we're going to use where title, and then we'll use the like instead of equals. So the rest of this remains the same. So where title like title, okay? But then what we'll do is we're going to do this. We'll say if, if not empty title like that. So let's do this only if the title is not empty. And let's move this in here. Okay. Then let's edit title because we can't search with it the way it is. We want to add some wildcards like this. In fact, let me just do this title. Okay, so we are putting this percent sign to say we don't care what's on the left and what's on the right of this search. Let's say a song is named um, Dance. If somebody types A and C, it should still find it because it's part of the text or done or whatever. The way searches work. So this is why we put these percent signs here. But otherwise, that's it, really. So let's try and uh, let me search for mad. Okay, uh, search on line nine, there's a problem. Something missing. Oh, okay. We don't need a dollar sign there. Sorry about that. And you see, there it is. So I want to search for baby. There it is, as simple as that. Okay, one in a million, one. Let's search for milli. There we go. That's how you search, exactly that. And you see the search term is right there. So if you want, you can even type it here uh, and say, uh, let's see, uh, get find, right? You can say something like searched for, and then you put that there like so. Okay, searched for meal. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe we don't need two of these. We can just say search for, and that should be enough. Yeah, let's search for day. Let me see, search for day. Um, search for one. There we go. Oh, one last thing. Let's add some pagination here. I almost forgot that. Um, so if there's too much music on here and we want to add more, uh, we want to to limit how much we can view per page. Maybe just, let's say we want to view just one song per page. So what we'll do, let's go to the music page and I show you that, close all. If we go to the music page yeah, right here, we can add some buttons. So if there is some content, or maybe there isn't, we can still add page. Let's add some buttons here. So class button, BG, uh, I don't know, orange maybe? Let's add next and previous. Let's float this one to the other side. So let me look at this page. And uh, that's what we have. Now the problem is because we're in this section. So let's move out of this. Let's move here. Because everything in there is, uh, yeah. So there we are. So we have next page, we have previous page. So let me put this inside another div. Oops, let me move this here. That way I can add some padding or anything like that. So, 
let me add classes I'll do MX2 like that all right so we have next and previous page okay cool now you may want to know what page you're on uh, that depends mm. So what we would do is to always guess what page we are on. So the first thing we'll do is let's go to, um, we can put this really anywhere. Uh, let's put it in the index page maybe so that we always know what page we are on. So right here, I can say page is equal to the page will always be in the get variable and that get variable will be named page and if it isn't there we'll put one like so okay so the page number is always in this and just to make sure that the page is always an integer we're just going to cast it as an integer like this so get page number all right so we always know that what page we are on just by calling page so if there's no page number assume we're on page one and then make sure it's an integer and by casting it as such so page is always our current page so if we want to go to the next page we just do page plus one that's it okay great so in this case, if we go to our thingy here, I want us to add a link to the next page. So in this case, we have PHP, uh, let's echo out the link. First, we start with root, okay? And then whatever page we are uh, currently on right now, hmm, Wait a second. Hmm. Might be a problem, but let's just do this. We are on the music page, so we just do. I, do, I wanted to make this automatic, but it would take two, uh, several minutes of coding, so let me just do it manual. Manually, so that's music. And then we put a question mark here and say page is equal to. So keep in mind, we're going to the previous page here, okay? Uh, so let's just create a, um, a variable that we are going to use, okay? We're going to call it prev page, like that, okay? And that's it. So page is equal to prev page. Let me do this. And let me copy the same thing. And this one will be next page. So you can create a separate file to handle this paging thing. So, but let's just do priv page is equal to, um, So here I have to ask the question, is page, the current page, if the current page is less than, um, if the current page is less than or equal to one, less than or equal to one, then previous page is going to be equal to the current, uh, it's equal to one. So less than or equal to one. Otherwise, just set it to whatever page minus one is. Next page is easier to make. This one is just, uh, is equal to page plus one. That's it. So let's refresh. Mm -hmm. So you see in the URL, there's just public slash music, but if I click next, oh, okay, wait a second. These are not being evaluated because this is not PHP. So let me echo them like this. All right. 
So if I refresh, this one says page two. So you see there will be page two there. If I click here, that's page one. If I hover on it, it's still at page one, regardless what I do. So if I put minus four, it will still send me to page one here. And this one, page two, page three, page four, you can see it in there, right? All right, great. That's how you change the page numbers. But let's use those page numbers in a query. So let's go to, we're on the music thingy here. We know the current page. So there's a formula here. We need two things. We need an offset, okay? And we need a limit. For now, let's put limit as one, okay? So limit is how to how many uh, items to retrieve. In this case, I just want one item per page so that we can see page numbers. So I've put that in there. So since limit is one, it's going to say limit one. So let's come back here and refresh. So there's only one item here currently, that's fine. But if I add an offset, then I'm telling it to not start from the very first, but to start after. So it should ignore a few of them and then get the next set of items. That's how you move to the next page. So let's say there's uh, 20 items that fit your criteria, okay, of your search query. And then you tell it to just bring five of those items out of 20, right? Then if you want to go to the next page, you can tell it to ignore the first five and then count the next five. That's what offset does. So here I can write offset and give it a number like offset 10, which means it will omit 10 and then count, start count retrieving records after finding 10 results, they need to start retrieving. But let's use offset in the variable here. Now offset is zero, that's the default value. So it won't shift anything. So here you, you will not see a difference at all. But if imagine I say offset one right there, it's going to go to the next item. There we go. So by just changing what the offset is, we can shift to different pages. So there's a formula to get an offset depending on the page number. So that formula is that I use myself. I know the current page is page. So I'll say page minus one, and then the result of this, I multiply by the limit. So which means I have to declare the limit first like this. All right, so this works, so don't worry about it. Let's say there's limit one, right? Imagine we're on page one, okay? I'm not going to offset anything. So one minus one is zero. Any number times zero is zero. So the offset is zero, meaning don't offset anything. Let's say we're on page two. So it will be two minus one, that will make one. 1 times 1 is 1, so it's going to offset one item. When we're on page 3, it's going to be 3 minus 1, which is 2. 2 times 1, that's 2. It's going to offset two items, just and so on and so forth. So you can do the calculations yourself and see it for yourself. So just by doing this, I've moved, I'm on page 1. If I go next, next, look at that and no more if I go previous, previous, previous. So, but I want, let's say I want two items to show, I'll change limit to two. Now I have two items, then when I go to the next page, I have this one, then I have nothing left. So that's how pagination works. So here I want it to retrieve 20 items, then it will know what to do with the rest of this. So this is a formula for everything else, right? So I'm just going to grab this and put it everywhere that I need pagination. So let's go, uh, you can put it on every page. Let's go to the admin, let's go to songs. Right where we are showing the songs, down here on the list. On this table, right? And I'm just going to put after the table, this right there okay great so let's go 
to that section in the admin songs so there's next and previous now now if i click next page uh, look what happens oh sorry the reason is that it's going to a different page entirely so what i need to do is change the links here uh, this is the songs page so i have to change this music to admin slash songs like that okay great so that the links correspond if i click click the page number is changing nothing is changing here because the query is not responding to it so you need to use these things limit and offset so go back here wherever we are reading this data from this is where we are loading the data from let's put that there and use it so instead of having a limit here i'll put a variable and then put an offset and put a variable of the offset as well simple as that we have done pagination so let me try and tell it to limit two first so i have two items if i click next i have a third one next i have nothing previous previous that's how simple it is to paginate okay so i'll leave it at 20. you can copy that and do it on every single page okay and then you can have pagination in that way all right so hopefully uh you have learned something valuable in this entire tutorial and i will see you in another video.